Do you feel that you use the same business English vocabulary over and over when you speak? You want to improve your English vocabulary? Are you ready for a challenge that will help you learn business English and build your confidence? I build confidence. My name is Grant. I'm not a teacher. I don't do grammar. I help you communicate confidently so you can achieve your business dreams. I have found that one of the best ways to build confidence is to go through difficult challenges and work hard to find success, completing the challenges. It may take a long time, but the process builds strong confidence. I created this challenge in the same way. This video will be long and you will have the opportunity to use it for hours and hours of practice in the future. All business professionals that are trying to improve their business English confidence can use this video and find great value in it. I created the storytelling series for all levels. In this series, I will share the most unique storytelling method to help you learn business English vocabulary and allow you to confidently use it in the future. I've shared many videos on my deep learning vocabulary approach, and I'm excited to present the first episode in a new series of videos today. You can check out my deep learning approach videos in this link above. I am a big believer in using stories to help my clients become comfortable learning business English vocabulary, words, and phrases. With this in mind, I've created this unique challenge for you that will help you climb something I call the fluency ladder from basic English to the advanced level, to the eloquent level. Here's how it works. I've created three stories for you. This is the first episode in this series, and it is a story about the owner of a coffee shop and his challenge of improving this coffee shop. The three stories are all exactly the same, except for one big thing. We will start on the bottom of the ladder, where I wrote the first story in basic English. I will present this first story to you in an interesting way, and I will ask you to practice presenting the story in the same interesting way that I present it. After you finish practicing by reading the story out loud, I will take the time to go through each word in the story that some of you might not be confident using today. I will give you a business definition of the word, an example sentence using the word, and also show you the original sentence that used the word in the story. This process of going through the details of each word is my deep learning vocabulary approach. After you go through the approach with me, you will be much more confident presenting the story out loud again and again and probably again. At this point, you'll be ready to start climbing the fluency ladder and you will try to climb from the basic English level to the advanced level. As I said earlier, the story will stay the same, but the business English vocabulary will increase in difficulty. I've written this story using only words that are normal and that a professional native English speaker would use in everyday business conversation. But I can promise you that it will be difficult for most of you, probably for all of you. Again, I will present the second story to you. And I'll ask you to pause the video and try to present the story in the same confident way that I will present the story. But honestly, most everyone 
will need to go through my deep learning vocabulary approach. With all of these words and terms and phrases that you find in the advanced level story, after we review that long list of interesting business English vocabulary, you can then try practicing by saying the second story out loud many times. And I mean many times. You will find that with practice and knowledge of all of this interesting vocabulary, that you'll be able to present the story confidently over time. But I can promise you, it will take many tries. And it's difficult. Let's see if you're up for the challenge. If you do it, I promise you'll build confidence. Finally, when you feel you're ready to climb the final stage of the fluency ladder, I will help you build your confidence with one more very difficult challenge. Going from advanced level to the eloquent level. Again, this will be the same story, only with increasingly more challenging business English vocabulary. I will present the story to you and go through my deep learning vocabulary approach. You will have the opportunity to increase your confidence by saying the story out loud until you feel very confident. I can promise you it's going to be difficult. But with time, dedication, and practice, following my process, you will build your confidence. Are you ready? Are you ready to begin? Let's do this. Let's start at the basic English level. Once upon a time in a busy city, there was a small coffee shop named The Morning Brew. This coffee shop was owned by a man named Tom. Tom's coffee shop was not just any ordinary place. It was a hub for local business professionals. They all loved to start their day with Tom's special coffee and a quick chat with friends. However, not everything was perfect. Despite the popularity, Tom noticed that his sales were not growing. He wondered why. One day, while serving coffee, he overheard a conversation between two customers, Sarah and Mike. They were discussing how they wished the coffee shop offered a quiet space for quick meetings. This got Tom thinking. He realized that while his coffee was good, he was missing something important, understanding what his customers truly wanted. The next day, Tom decided to talk to his customers directly. He asked them what they liked about his coffee shop and what could be better. The feedback was eye-opening. Many customers expressed the same need for a quiet space as Sarah and Mike did. Inspired by this feedback, Tom made a bold decision. He rearranged a part of his coffee shop to create a cozy, quiet corner for meetings. He also introduced a new express meeting combo, a quick service that included coffee and snacks, perfect for business discussions. The changes were a hit. Word spread quickly among the business community. More and more professionals started coming to the morning brew, not just for the coffee, but for the convenience of having a great place to meet. Tom's sales began to soar, but he didn't stop there. He kept talking to his customers, always looking for ways to improve. He introduced some high-speed internet connections, added more power outlets, and even started a loyalty program. Months passed, and the morning brew became more than just a coffee shop. It became a symbol of how listening to customers and adapting to their needs can lead to success. Tom was proud what he had achieved, but knew 
that the real heroes of his success story were his customers. One day during a local business gathering, Tom was invited to share his story. Standing in front of a room full of entrepreneurs, Tom began. Good evening, everyone. My story is about a little coffee shop that could. It's about understanding that success in business is not just about having a good product. It's about listening, adapting, and always putting your customers first. As business professionals, we often get caught up in numbers and strategies. But at the heart of every successful business are the people we serve. My journey with the Morning Brew taught me the importance of customer feedback. It showed me that sometimes the most valuable insights come not from market research, but from the conversations we have every day. Tom concluded, to all the entrepreneurs here, my advice is simple. Never underestimate the power of listening to your customers. It might just be the key to unlocking your next big opportunity. Thank you. The room erupted in applause. Tom's simple but powerful message resonated with everyone. It was a reminder that in the fast-paced world of business, taking the time to listen and connect with customers on a personal level can lead to unexpected and rewarding paths to success. And so, the Morning Brew continued to flourish, a testament to the power of understanding and meeting customer needs. Tom's story spread far and wide inspiring other business professionals to adopt a customer-first approach in their ventures. In the end, Tom's journey wasn't just about transforming a coffee shop. It was about discovering the heart of business success, building genuine connections, and ensuring customer satisfaction. And that, dear friends, is the story of the Morning Brew a small coffee shop that achieved big dreams by listening to its customers. Great. You notice how I present a story. We have to add some feeling. We have to add some emotion. We're not robots. We're not robots at work. And this is hard to be able to speak English at work with some feeling, with some emotion. And it's a big part of what I'm trying to help you with is to be able to speak with some feeling, some emotion. So for many of you, this story could be very easy. I'm sure many of you know these words in this story and it's not a challenge. However, I do challenge you to be able to present this same story out loud with some feeling with some emotion in your voice. And I really encourage you to listen to me going through this story again and for you to try to present with some feeling and some emotion in your voice. Say it out loud. Say it proud. Get the words to come out. Because it's a difficult thing to do when we're trying to use another language is to add feeling and emotion. But that's how you speak in your native language. That's how you speak at work. So practice it. Practice it with English. It will be uncomfortable at the beginning. But keep doing it. And it really works. So in this first story, in the ladder of fluency, the vocabulary is not so difficult for most of you. Some of you, it will be really difficult. And what I'll encourage you to do is again to take what I just presented and for you to go through and practice that. Practice saying this out loud in the same way that I do. And when you're ready to move on, you can move on to the second story. And it's a step up on the ladder of fluency. It becomes much more difficult with a lot of new vocabulary words for most of you. And I promise you, 
it'll be a challenge. But before you do that, I am going to go through about 50 of these vocabulary terms from this first story. I chose these 50 or so vocabulary words for a number of different reasons. Some are difficult to pronounce for many people. Some have multiple meanings. Some, a lot of people don't know what they mean. So I'm going to go through a process, which is my deep learning vocabulary process. And I will give you the word. I'll give you the pronunciation of it. I'll give you my own little special pronunciation guide of how I try to help people, which is a very normal way of doing it. I'll give you the definition of the business sense of this word. I'll give you an example sentence of how else you could use it. And we'll also review the example sentence that this word or phrase was used in the story. This takes some time to go through this list of 50 or so words. So again, if you want to skip forward and go to the next story and challenge yourself. So again, if you're ready to skip ahead and go to the next story, and you're ready to start climbing the next level on the ladder of fluency, go ahead. Be my guest and begin going through the second story. But if you want to go through these vocabulary words with me, let me start. And let's go through these words together. The first word is brew. And brew is the process of making tea, or coffee, or beer, usually in hot water. An example sentence would be, Nancy brewed a fresh pot of coffee every morning for her boss. In the story, it was used as, there was a small coffee shop named the morning brew. Hub, pronounced hub. It means the central or main part of something where there is most activity. The downtown area is a hub for local businesses. It's where everyone goes to meet and share ideas. In the story, it, it was, was Tom's, Tom's coffee, coffee shop. shop. It was not, not just, just any ordinary, ordinary place. place, it was, it was a, a hub, hub for local, local business, business professionals. professionals. Popularity, popularity. Here you can see my crazy way of defining how do you say these words in more of a normal sense. I don't like the phonetic ways that people show how to say these things. So to me, there's four sounds here. Pop, you know the word pop, you know the word you. Lair is just a word I made up. Lair, itty, larity, popularity. Put it all together. There should be very normal sounds. Popularity. It's a horrible looking word. But when you say it this way, it's pretty easy. Popularity. It means the state of being liked, admired, or enjoyed by a large number of people. An example would be, the new video game gained popularity among teenagers due to its creative gameplay and stunning graphics. In the story, it was, despite the popularity, Tom noticed that his sales were not growing. Sales. I included this because it can be confusing in this story. And in this case, it really means revenue. The definition is the activities involved in selling products or services. An example sentence would be, we need to increase our sales by reaching out to more customers and improving our marketing strategies. In the story, it was Tom noticed that his sales were not growing. Overheard. It's... When you have that H-E-A-R-D, it's confusing to people. But to me, it's over, her, and then put a D on the end. Overheard. Overheard. It means to hear what other people are saying without intending to and without their knowledge. An example would be Kate overheard her classmates discussing their plans for the weekend while she was sitting in the library. In the story, it was, one day, while serving coffee, he overheard a conversation between two customers 
Sarah and Mike. Quick. It means done or occurring with speed, taking a short amount of time. An example would be the chef prepared a quick meal for the busy office workers who had limited lunch breaks. In the story, it was, they all loved to start their day with Tom's special coffee and a quick chat with friends. Feedback. It means information or statements of opinion about something, such as a new product that can tell you if it's successful or liked. An example sentence would be, the customer feedback was very positive, suggesting we're on the right track with our new product launch. In the story, it was used as, my journey with the morning brew taught me the importance of customer feedback. Eye-opening. It means surprising and teaching you new facts about life, people, etc. Etc. is an interesting word. It's an old Latin word. And I spelled it here for you. It's E-T-C-E-T-E-R-A. Et cetera. Et cetera is the pronunciation. Et cetera. An example would be, reading that book was an eye-opening experience. It completely changed my understanding of the topic. In the story, the sentence was, the feedback was eye-opening. Express. Now, I spelled it in a way that's a little bit different than you've ever seen before, I'm sure. But after years of helping people, this is a confusing word for people to pronounce. So let's break it into two sounds. Ek and spress. Neither one of these are words, but they're sounds. Ek, spress, express, express. And you put that together and you get express. The definition is conveyed or communicated thoughts, feelings, or ideas. An example sentence, she expressed her gratitude to her colleagues for their support during a difficult project. In the story, it was used as, many customers expressed the same need for a quiet space as Sarah and Mike did. Inspired, definition of inspired is to make someone feel like they want to do something and they can do it. An example sentence would be, watching her favorite artist perform live inspired her to start learning how to play the guitar. In the story, it was used as, inspired by this feedback, Tom made a bold decision. Bold. The definition is not frightened of danger. The team made the bold move of trading its star player. In the story, it was Tom made a bold decision. To rearrange. It means change the position, order, or arrangement of something. An example sentence could be, we rearranged the office space to create a more open and collaborative environment for our team. In the story, it was, he rearranged a part of his coffee shop to create a cozy, quiet corner for meetings. Cozy. Again, I spelled it in my crazy way. Cozy. Cozy, unless you're using British English and then cozed. <laughs> but as an American, you would say cozy, cozy. The definition is giving a feeling of comfort, warmth, and relaxation. An example, after a long day of work, she enjoyed a good book in her cozy chair. In the story, it was used as he rearranged a part of his coffee shop to create a cozy quiet corner for meetings. Introduced. It means brought something into use or operation for the first time. An example would be the company introduced a new software system to improve project management and efficiency. In the story, it was he introduced some high-speed internet connections, added more power outlets, and even started a loyalty program. Combo, it's short for combination. It means a combination or 
package that includes multiple items or services offered together. An example would be the lunch combo at the restaurant included a sandwich, a drink, and a side dish for a discounted price. In the story, it was, he also introduced a new express meeting combo, a quick service that included coffee and snacks, perfect for business discussions. It was a hit. That's a good phrase. (laughs) It means something that's successful, popular, or well-received often resulting in widespread approval. An example could be, the new song released by the band became a hit, topping the charts within days of its release. In the story, it was, the changes were a hit. Word spread quickly among the business community. Spread. People look at this and they get confused with the spelling. To me, it's like, Bread, spread, bread. Uh, So in my crazy spelling, it's SP and then the word red. Spread, spread. It means to become widely known, often through sharing or distribution. An example would be the news of the upcoming event spread rapidly across social media platforms. In the story, it was word spread quickly among the business community. Convenience, it's kind of a scary looking word, but let's break it into four different sounds here. Con, convene, convene, convene e, convene e, ants, convenience, convenience. And then relax and just say convenience. It means the quality of being suitable, useful, or easily accessible. Accessible. An example could be online shopping offers the convenience of shopping from home and having items delivered to your doorstep. In the story, it was more and more professionals started coming to the morning brew, not just for the coffee but for the convenience of having a great place to meet. Soar. Um, There's different words in English, the same soar. You can, oh, I was in the gym and I'm so sore. Yeah, you can have that also. It's the same pronunciation. So it's the same pronunciation as S-O-R-E, soar. The definition is to rise quickly and gracefully to increase rapidly. An example would be, sales of the new product began to soar after it received positive reviews from customers. In the story, it was, Tom's sales began to soar. A loyalty program. It means a rewards program offered by a company to customers who frequently make purchases. An example would be, Our loyalty program rewards customers with discounts and special offers, encouraging them to keep coming back. In the story, it was, he introduced some high-speed internet connections, added more power outlets, and even started a loyalty program. Symbol. Uh, Difficult to pronounce for many people, so I broke this down into two sounds, sim and bowl like the animal, a bull. So symbol, just symbol. The definition is a thing that represents or stands for something else, often carrying a deeper meaning. An example would be, the dove is often used as a symbol of peace. A dove is a white bird that you see all the time in movies and stuff. The In the story, it was used as the morning brew became more than just a coffee shop. It became a symbol of how listening to customers and adapting to their needs can lead to success. Adapting, difficult word for people to pronounce often. So I created three sounds here. Adapting, adapting, adapting making something suitable for new use or purpose, changing, 
I always think of adapting as changing. Example is adapting to the changing market trends is crucial for any business that wants to remain competitive. In the story, it was, it became a symbol of how listening to customers and adapting to their needs can lead to success. Success, another word that many people have difficulty pronouncing. So I broke it into two sounds, suck and cess. Success, success. The definition is the achieving of results wanted or hoped for. An example could be after years of hard work and dedication, She finally found success in her chosen career path. In the story, it was used as Tom's journey wasn't just about transforming a coffee shop. It was about discovering the heart of business success. Achieve. Again, another word that's difficult to pronounce for many. I created three sounds out of this, but they really blend together as almost one sound. Uh, Achieve, achieve, ah, chi and eve, achieve. (laughs) So you put it together and it's just achieve. To successfully accomplish or complete the desired goal or result through effort, skill, or determination. An example sentence could be, with commitment and dedication, she was able to achieve her dream of writing a book. In the story, it was Tom was proud of what he had achieved, but he knew that the real heroes of his success story were his customers. Heroes. Hero is, to me, it's pronounced with two sounds, here and O. You all know here and O. Hero. Hero. In the sentence, there were heroes. The definition is individuals who are admired or celebrated for their courage or significant achievements, often in difficult times. An example would be firefighters are often regarded as heroes for their bravery in risking their lives to save others. In the story, it was Tom was proud of what he had achieved, but knew that the real heroes of his success story were his customers. Now, here's a word that many people struggle with, but let me break it down for you. I always tell my clients, don't look at it. But if we break it down into these five sounds that you can make, on, tr, on, tr, pr, pren, entre, pren, nu, er, entrepreneur, 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 entrepreneur. Just like that, entrepreneur. Uh, It's really difficult when you look at it and try to pronounce it, but it's just entrepreneur. The definition is individuals who organize and manage a business, taking on financial risks in the hope of making a profit. An example could be Steve Jobs, famous entrepreneur who founded a successful tech company. In the story, It was, one day, during a local business gathering, Tom was invited to share his story. Standing in front of a room full of entrepreneurs, Tom began to get caught up in something. This is a phrasal verb, and it means to become very involved in or with something, often to the point of not doing other important things. An example would be, she often gets caught up in her work and forgets to take breaks. In the story, it was, as business professionals, we often get caught up in numbers and strategies. Strategies, another difficult word for many people to pronounce. So let me break it down into three sounds for you. Strategies, strategies, strategies. A detailed plan for achieving success in a business situation. The company implemented new marketing strategies to expand its customer base. In the story, it was, as business professionals, 
we often get caught up in numbers and strategies. At the heart of, this is a phrase that means at the core or center of something, representing its most fundamental aspect or principle. An example would be love and compassion lie at the heart of every meaningful relationship. In the story, it was used as Tom's journey wasn't just about transforming a coffee shop. It was about discovering the heart of business success. Insights. It means an accurate and deep understanding of something. An example could be the insights from the market research report have helped us tailor our marketing strategy more effectively. In the story, it was used as it showed me that sometimes the most valuable insights come not from market research, but from the conversations we have every day. To conclude, another difficult word to pronounce for many people. So let me break it into three sounds that are really two sounds. Con, clue, you know the word clue. I've got a clue that we can solve this problem, and then just add a D on the end. Conclude. Conclude. Put it together. Just conclude. It means to bring to an end, to finish, or to terminate. An example would be, the meeting concluded with a summary of the key points discussed. In the story, it was, Tom concluded. To all the entrepreneurs here, my advice is simple. Never underestimate the power of listening to your customers. Underestimate. It means to judge something as less important or effective than it actually is. An example would be, she underestimated the difficulty of the task and ended up struggling to complete it on time. In the story, it was used as, Tom concluded, to all the entrepreneurs here, my advice is simple. Never underestimate the power of listening to your customers. Unlocking. It means to open something that was not available to be open before, often leading to new opportunities or understanding. An example sentence could be, by unlocking the potential of renewable energy sources, we can reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. In the story, it was used as Tom concluded, never underestimate the power of listening to your customers. It might just be the key to unlocking your next big opportunity. Erupt. There's another strange word for pronunciation for a lot of people. So I created three sounds for it. E. E, and then rup, and then just put a T on the end. Erupt. Erupt. The definition is to suddenly express your feelings in a noisy way. In the example sentence, it could be the audience erupted into cheers when the band took the stage. In the story, it was the room erupted in applause. Applause. And applause is pronounced in a, in a way that creates confusion for a lot of people. So I broke it into three sounds. Uh, claw, claw is not a word, but there's a claw. Um, but plaw, and then just put an S on the end. Applause, applause. So it's a strange looking word, but it's just applause. The definition is the act of clapping one's hands together as a sign of approval. The audience erupted into applause after the musician's stunning performance. And in the story, it was the room erupted in applause. Resonated with. There's a phrasal verb, and it means to have a powerful effect or value that you can relate to.
an example sentence would be the song's lyrics resonated with listeners who found them deeply relatable to their own experience. In the story, it was Tom's simple but powerful message resonated with everyone. Reminder, and this creates some confusion of people trying to pronounce it, so I created three sounds for you. Reminder, reminder. It means something that prompts or helps someone remember something, often by bringing it to their attention again. An example sentence could be, she set a reminder on her phone to buy groceries after work. In the story, it was a reminder that in the fast-paced world of business, taking the time to listen and connect with customers on a personal level can lead to unexpected and rewarding paths to success. Fast-paced. It means describing something that moves or progresses quickly, having a fast or rapid tempo. An example could be the fast-paced nature of business demands quick decision-making and adaptability. In the story, it was, it was a reminder that in the fast-paced world of business, rewarding, it means providing satisfaction or a sense of fulfillment, worth doing or achieving because it brings benefits or positive outcomes. An example would be teaching, can be a challenging profession, but it's also incredibly rewarding when you see your students succeed. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. Taking the time to listen and connect with customers on a personal level can lead to unexpected and rewarding paths to success. Flourish, flourish. It doesn't sound like it looks, so I broke it into two sounds. Fleur, which is not a word, F-L-E-R-R, fleur, ish. Flourish, it's a good word. It means to grow or develop successfully. An example would be with proper care and attention, the garden began to flourish. In the story, it was the morning brew continued to flourish testament to the power of understanding and meeting customer needs. A testament to is a phrase, and it means something that serves as a clear demonstration or proof of a particular quality, principle, or idea. An example could be his recovery from a serious illness was a testament to his strength and resilience. There's a good word resilience. In the story, it was the morning brew continued to flourish, a testament to the power of understanding and meeting customer needs. Far and wide is a phrase, and it means over a wide area, widely or extensively. An example sentence could be The news of their engagement spread far and wide, reaching friends and family around the world. In the story, it was Tom's story spread far and wide, inspiring other business professionals to adopt a customer-first approach in their ventures. Inspiring. It means having the effect of motivating or encouraging someone to take action, pursue their goals, or overcome obstacles. Her dedication to charity work was inspiring, prompting others to volunteer their time and resources. In the story, it was Tom's story spread far and wide, inspiring other business professionals to adopt a customer-first approach in their ventures. Adopt. It means to take up or start to use or follow. An example would be, the company decided to adopt new policies to improve its efficiencies. In the story, it was used as, Tom's story spread far and wide, 
inspiring other business professionals to adopt a customer first approach to their ventures. A venture. The definition is a new business initiative, project, or undertaking, typically involving some degree of risk or uncertainty. An example sentence would be, starting a tech startup was a risky venture, but it ultimately paid off with tremendous success. In the story, it was used as Tom's story spread far and wide, inspiring other business professionals to adopt a customer-first approach in their ventures. Transforming. It means changing or altering something significantly, often resulting in a fundamental shift in its form, nature, or appearance. A renovation project was aimed at transforming the old warehouse into a modern office space. In the story, it was Tom's journey wasn't just about transforming a coffee shop. <laughs> Genuine. Genuine is a fantastic word. It means real. But many people really struggle with the idea of how to pronounce it. So let's use my crazy method. I made three different sounds here. The first one is a person's name, and then you, and then win. Gen, you, win. Genuine. Genuine. Let's say them together. Genuine. Oh, it means authentic, which is a difficult word also, but it means genuine or real. Authentic, sincere, or real. An example sentence would be, her genuine smile brightened up the room and made everyone feel welcome. In the sentence, in the story, it was used as Tom's journey wasn't just about transforming a coffee shop. It was about discovering the heart of business success, building genuine connections, and ensuring customer satisfaction. Ensuring. It means making certain that Something is accomplished or maintained, guaranteeing or securing a particular outcome or condition. An example sentence would be, the company implemented strict quality control measures to ensure that their products met the highest standards. In the story, it was used as, it was all about discovering the heart of business success building genuine connections, and ensuring customer satisfaction. Okay, we made it through this long list of vocabulary. This is my idea of deep learning. It's not fast. We don't win any points for going fast. But when you take the time to really deep learn this vocabulary, you find out what the word means, you become very confident in the pronunciation, you use it in example sentence, maybe two example sentence, we see how it fits into the story. Now, if this story was difficult for you the first time, I want you to go back, read the story again, read it out loud, read it with feeling, read it with emotion, present it as if you're presenting to an audience. Now that you know what all of these vocabulary terms mean, you know how to pronounce them, it makes the story really come alive. It'll make it so much easier. Continue presenting that story until you feel 100% confident about it. And if you're ready, you're ready for a real challenge? <laughs> Let's move on. Let's try to climb the fluency ladder and go up to the next step. Join me? Let's go. Let me give you an example of what I mean of climbing this ladder of fluency, starting on the basic English level, moving next to the advanced level, and finally, with the challenge of getting to the eloquent 
level. I'm going to go through a short paragraph that's used in each one of these stories. And I, and I just want to show you how the difficulty in vocabulary, sentence structure, pronunciation increases as you climb the ladder of fluency. So let me go through these three short paragraphs and you can get a feel for them. I'm not going to go through the definitions of the words right now, but as I go into these stories deeper after each story, I go through the definition, pronunciation, example sentences, how the word was used in the story, and give you all the deep learning tools you need to become confident and comfortable with all of these. But here is an example. So let's start in the basic English level story, the first story. Here's the paragraph. The changes were a hit. Word spread quickly among the business community. More and more professionals started coming to the morning brew, not just for the coffee, but for the convenience of having a great place to meet. Tom's sales began to soar. Most of you will be able to understand that very well, without problem. I would think you probably know all of that vocabulary. For some of you, it might be difficult. But that's the pretty basic level of business English at this point. Now, let's take a look at the next level, the advanced English level. And let's climb that ladder of fluency. Here's an example of what that looks like and sounds like. Here we go. The initiative was a resounding success, propelling the morning brew into the limelight within the professional circles. The shop burgeoned, transforming into not just a coffee haven, but a beacon of convenience for business get-togethers. Obviously, it became a lot more difficult. Probably many words in there you've never seen, used, or maybe even heard before. I get asked all the time, well, okay, are these just academic words and you just put them in the story? No, these are all words that I have used many times in the past. But they're hard. And they're not easy. And again, after each story, I go through and give you all the deep learning tools you need. The pronunciation, the definitions, example sentences, how they were used in this story. And together, that will give you the confidence to go through and be able to say this paragraph out loud with confidence. That's the point of this video. Okay, let's climb the final <laughs> rung of the ladder and get up to the top of this ladder, which I call the eloquent level. Eloquent is such a beautiful word. Here it is. The strategic overhaul catapulted the morning brew into a new echelon of relevance within the professional community, transforming it from a mere coffee shop into a seminal hub for business collaboration. Fantastic. What you'll find is that in the third story, there's a lot of vocabulary that was used in the second story. And many of those words might have been used in the first story. So they kind of build on each other as you climb this ladder of fluency. It's a great challenge for you. I hope you take it on. Take your time going through this video. Go back to it many times. Really put the work in. You'll be amazed how even this third level of the ladder of fluency can become natural for you. How you can be able to say and really understand each of these words and have confidence doing it. Enjoy this challenge. Are you ready? Let's move up this ladder. Let's take another step. Let's go from our basic English level to an advanced level. And to get the idea of what we're doing here, I have the same story. 
It's the same people in the story. It's the same message. But it's more difficult words. And the whole point is for you to see where you are on your fluency ladder. How comfortable are you using more advanced business English words and phrases? So here's a story about a coffee shop business trying to improve it. And in the first story, maybe it was difficult for you. Maybe it was easy for you. It all depends on your current situation with your English. But if the first story was easy, I can guarantee you, you're going to have some difficulty with this second story in the advanced version. But that's great because I want to show you that if we take our time and we really use deep learning for our vocabulary, and what I mean by that is we go through all these words, and it's going to take a long time to get through all the vocabulary in this section of the advanced story. But we're going to, I'm going to go through all of these with you. And you're going to understand, become confident in the definition and using it as an example sentence, seeing how it fits in this story, and also in the pronunciation of it. You build confidence by understanding what these words and phrases mean and by being able to pronounce them. Then you're going to go back and go through the story. At the beginning, this story probably is going to feel so impossible, so difficult. But as you go through it and you go take the time to go through with me after the story and go through the deep learning process with me, you'll see what happens with this story. And you'll be able to repeat it a number of times. You'll be able to say it out loud and say it like me. Shall we do it? Are you ready? Are you ready for this challenge? I'm going to read the story. I'm not just going to read it. I'm going to present it to you. Let's do this. Nestled among the hustle and bustle of a vibrant metropolis was the Morning Brew, a quaint yet pivotal coffee shop owned by a gentleman named Tom. This establishment wasn't just a place to grab your morning caffeine fix. It was a sanctuary for the city's business professionals, a locale where they convened kickstart their day with robust conversations over Tom's signature blends. Yet, despite its popularity, Tom observed a sluggishness in sales, a puzzle that left him perplexed. It was during a routine day, amidst the aroma of freshly brewed coffee, that Tom stumbled upon a conversation that would pivot the trajectory of the morning brew. Sarah and Mike, two regulars, were lamenting the lack of tranquil space for impromptu business meetings. This revelation was a light bulb moment for Tom. He realized his oversight and not fully grasping his clientele's needs. Determined, Tom embarked on a mission the following day, engaging in candid conversations with his patrons. Feedback was revealing a common thread emerged, the desire for a serene meeting space. Fueled by this insight, Tom undertook a transformative initiative. He reimagined a section of his shop into a serene nook, designed for discussions and introduced an express meeting combo, a hand-picked offering of coffee and snacks tailored for the business community. The initiative was a resounding success, propelling the morning brew into the limelight within the professional circles. The shop burgeoned, transforming into not just a coffee haven, but a beacon of convenience for business get-togethers. Tom's ingenuity didn't stop there. He continued to iterate based on customer feedback, incorporating Wi-Fi, augmenting the space with ample power outlets, and rolling out a loyalty program, further cementing his shop's reputation. As the morning brew evolved, it became emblematic of how attentiveness to customer feedback and agility in business strategies foster success. Proud yet humble, Tom acknowledged that the cornerstone of his success 
was the invaluable insights from his patrons. The local business community took notice, and soon Tom was invited to share his journey at a gathering of entrepreneurs. Addressing a room of peers, Tom began, Good evening, esteemed colleagues. My narrative today revolves around a modest coffee shop that dared to listen, adapt, and thrive. It underscores the essence of business, the profound impact of nurturing a customer-centric ethos. He continued, In our pursuit of growth and innovation, let's not overlook the fundamental principle that our enterprises are ultimately about serving people. The morning brews transformation from just another coffee shop to a cornerstone of the business community exemplifies the power of engaging with and responding to the needs of our clientele. Concluding his talk, Tom imparted, to all aspiring and established entrepreneurs here, I leave you with this thought. The essence of business success lies in the value we provide to our customers. Let's commit to fostering an environment where listening is just as critical as leading. The audience's response was a testament to the resonance of Tom's message. It served as a moving reminder that in the dynamic realm of business, success is intricately tied to our ability to connect with and understand the needs of those we serve. The morning brew thrived, a testament to the transformative power of customer feedback. Tom's narrative inspired a wave of entrepreneurs to adopt a more listener-oriented approach in their ventures. In essence, Tom's odyssey with the morning brew was not merely about the evolution of a coffee shop, but a lesson in the fundamental tenets of business success, empathy, adaptability, and the enduring value of customer satisfaction. Great. You got through the story. Fantastic. <laughs> so obviously, the story is much more difficult. Again, the second story is exactly the same as the first story. However, I included a lot of advanced business English vocabulary. And you might wonder, oh, is this just academic vocabulary? Who cares about it? I've been through each of these words. I use them. I use all of them. They're quite normal to be used. If you're around an environment where it's all non-native English speakers speaking to other non-native English speakers, yes, they wouldn't be normal. But if you're in a professional environment in a native-speaking country, English-speaking country, they are normal, advanced business English vocabulary. So if you'd like to climb that ladder of fluency and get to the next step, this is a great opportunity for you. If you're ready, we're going to go through my deep learning process with all of the vocabulary, and it takes a long time to get through this list. But that's the key here. Going slow to go fast. We go slow through the deep learning process. We go fast through the confidence level. And fluency happens quicker. You can go through this with me. Listen to me. Pronounce all these words. Explain what they mean. Give you example sentences. Or you can download the form in the link below and have these for your use to be able to work on these. But if you do download it, I want you to say all of this out loud. This is not about learning English. It's about using it. It's about doing. It's about building your speaking confidence. These are hard. These stories are hard. But you can do them. But you have to understand how to pronounce these words. You have to feel confident about that. You have to understand what they mean. All these words and terms. You have to understand how to use them in sentences. That's deep learning. When you do that, then the story will come alive. 
So you can go through, try to do this story on your own, repeat it, say it out loud, just like I said it. You'll see it's a struggle. Put in the work. I challenge you to go through all of these words, terms, and phrases with me, and then go back and go through this story. You'll see what happens with your confidence. It's like magic. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's work on our deep learning of vocabulary. Let's go through this very long list of vocabulary. And this list of vocabulary is long. You can check the thumbnails on the bottom of this video and see where the story three begins if you'd like to just skip ahead. But if you want to go through these with me you can go through the process of deep learning, let's do this. Let's jump right in. First word is nestled. The T is not pronounced. So I have spelled it in my way of the way I feel, the way I say this word out of my mouth. That's the only, I made up these spellings, these sounds. So uh, N-E-S-S-E-L-L-E-D, nestled, is the way that you would pronounce this. Think of a bird's nest. It means settled or situated in a snug or cozy position, typically in a place that is sheltered or protected. An example sentence would be, the cabin was nestled among all the tall trees, providing a secluded and peaceful retreat. In the story, it's used as part of this sentence, nestled among the hustle and bustle of a vibrant metropolis was the morning brew. The next term is hustle and bustle. Again, the T is not pronounced in either one of these words. So the pronunciation, once again, is hustle and bustle. It's a phrase I've used many times in the past. You might consider it an old phrase, but I'm an old man. So these would be phrases that we might find from somebody like me. A definition for hustle and bustle is a noisy and busy activity, usually associated with crowded or bustling places, such as cities or marketplaces. Here's an example sentence. The streets of New York City are always filled with hustle and bustle, even late into the night. As it's used in the story, it's part of this sentence. Nestled among the hustle and bustle of a vibrant metropolis was the morning brew. Vibrant. It means full of energy, vitality, and color, lively and dynamic. An example sentence could be, the artist's paintings were vibrant and captivating, bursting with bold colors and expressive brushstrokes. Lots of difficult words in there for you. In the story, it was used as, nestled among the hustle and bustle of a vibrant metropolis was the morning brew, a quaint yet pivotal coffee shop owned by a gentleman named Tom. Metropolis. Metropolis means a very large and densely populated industrial and commercial city. An example sentence could be, the company decided to establish its new headquarters in the metropolis to take advantage of the vast market and skilled workforce. In the story, it was used as nestled among the hustle and bustle of a vibrant metropolis was the morning brew, a quaint yet pivotal coffee shop owned by a gentleman named Tom. Quaint. The pronunciation to me is the same as paint or saint, just with a Q-U at the beginning, quaint. It means attractively unusual or old fashioned typically having a charming or picturesque appearance. An example sentence could be, the village was filled with quaint cottages, each with its own unique character and story. In the story, it was used 
in this sentence, the Morning Brew, a quaint yet pivotal coffee shop owned by a gentleman named Tom. Pivotal. As you'll see in many of these pronunciations, I put this A-H in here. Piv-a-tul. The A-H to me is a. Uh. <laughs> so the definition of pivotal is of crucial importance or significance, central to the development or outcome of a situation. An example sentence could be, his decision to invest in new technology was pivotal to the company's success in the competitive market. As part of the story, it was in this part of a sentence. The Morning Brew, a quaint yet pivotal coffee shop owned by a gentleman named Tom. A caffeine fix. Caffeine and coffee. So, very common term, a caffeine fix. And the definition is a jargon term referring to the act of consuming caffeine, typically through coffee or other caffeinated beverages. There's a difference in pronunciation between caffeine and caffeinated. Other caffeinated beverages to satisfy a craving or boost energy levels. An example sentence could be, after a long night of studying, she needed a caffeine fix to stay awake during her morning lecture. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. This establishment wasn't just a place to grab your morning caffeine fix. Sanctuary. I did my best to create a, the way I would pronounce it. Sank, chew, airy. Sanctuary, sanctuary. And I find when I help my clients do this is that when you're practicing it, it's sank, chew, airy, but then just relax. Sanctuary, and the word will come out. The definition of sanctuary is a place of refuge or safety, a tranquil and peaceful environment where one can find solace or relief from stress or troubles. An example sentence would be, the garden was her sanctuary, a place where she could escape from the chaos of daily life and reconnect with nature. As part of the story, it was in this part of a sentence. This establishment wasn't just a place to grab your morning caffeine fix. It was a sanctuary for the city's business professionals. Locale. It doesn't look like locale, but it's pronounced locale. It's quite a common word. It means a place or setting where something happens or is set, a specific location or area. An example sentence could be, the novel is set in a quaint Italian locale, complete with picturesque landscapes and charming villages. In the story, it was part of this sentence, a sanctuary for the city's business professionals, a locale where they convened to kickstart their day with robust conversations over Tom's signature blends. To convene is a verb, convene, convene. It's a good word. The definition is to come together or gather for a formal meeting be an assembly. Think of convention. The example sentence could be, uh, the committee will convene next week to discuss the proposed changes to the company's policies. In the story, it was part of the sentence, a locale where they convene to kickstart their day with robust conversations over Tom's signature blends. Great sentence. To kickstart something. It sounds just like it looks. Kickstart. The definition is to initiate or begin something with energy and enthusiasm. To give a boost or jumpstart to an activity or process. Example sentence is, she decided to kickstart her fitness journey by going for a morning run every day. In the story, it was part of this sentence. Again. A locale where they convene to 
kickstart their day with robust conversations over Tom's signature blends. Robust. It, these two sounds, robust, robust. It means strong, sturdy, vigorous, characterized by strength, resilience, or effectiveness. An example sentence would be, the company implemented a robust security system to prevent sensitive data from cyber threats. In the story, it was part of the same sentence, a locale where they convened to kickstart their day with robust conversations over Tom's signature blends. Signature blends. It's a good phrase for the story. It means special or unique combinations of coffee beans or flavors created by a particular coffee shop like Tom or his brand or individual, often representing their distinctive style and taste. An example sentence could be, the coffee shop's signature blends were a popular choice among customers, known for their rich and complex flavors. In the story, it was part of this same sentence, a locale where they convened to kickstart their day with robust conversations over Tom's signature blends. Sluggishness. <laughs> it's a difficult definition here, <laughs> but it's that feeling of a Saturday morning after you've had a big week of work and you just kind of feel oh, sluggish. <laughs> Tired and lazy would be a great term. But here's a complicated definition for you. A state of being slow, lethargic, it's a great word, or lacking in energy or activity. A feeling of inertia or sluggish movement. An example sentence could be, after a heavy meal, he experienced a sense of sluggishness and found it difficult to concentrate. In the story, it was used as part of the sentence. Yet, despite its popularity, Tom observed a sluggishness in sales, a puzzle that left him perplexed. Puzzle. I couldn't come up with a different way to spell puzzle in, in a way that would help with your pronunciation. So it's just pronounced puzzle. I think everybody knows what a puzzle is. But in this case, it's a, a little bit different in this story. So the definition of puzzle is something that is difficult to understand, solve, or explain. A perplexing or challenging problem or situation. An example sentence could be, the mystery novel presented a complex puzzle that kept readers guessing until the very end. In the story, it was used as, yet despite its popularity, Tom observed a sluggishness in sales, a puzzle that left him perplexed. Perplex. It sounds just like it looks. Perplex. Perplex. The definition of perplexed is to cause someone to feel confused, puzzled, or uncertain about something, to make someone unsure or perplexed. An example sentence could be, the cryptic message in the letter perplexed him, leaving him unsure of its meaning. In the story, it was used as, yet despite its popularity, Tom observed a sluggishness in sales, a puzzle that Left him perplexed. Routine. Pronounced routine. Routine. The definition of routine is a regular or habitual series of activities, tasks, or procedures that are performed in a particular order or manner, often as part of one's daily schedule. An example sentence could be, she followed her morning routine of yoga and meditation to start her day on a positive note. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. It was during a routine day amidst the aroma of freshly brewed coffee. Amidst. This one's a little hard to pronounce for native speakers also. Amidst. Amidst. 
There's just a little D in there somewhere. So it's amidst. The definition is in the middle of or surrounded by, in the presence of, or during a particular situation or condition. An example sentence could be, the children played happily amidst the colorful autumn leaves in the park. In the story, it was part of this sentence. It was during a routine day, amidst the aroma of freshly brewed coffee. Aroma. The smell of something. Aroma. Aroma. It means a pleasant or distinctive smell. Typically a fragrant. <laughs> Easy for me to say. Typically a fragrant one. The characteristic scent or fragrance of something. A smell. Example sentence would be, the aroma of freshly baked bread wafted through the kitchen, enticing everyone to come and taste. <laughs> Go look up wafted. <laughs> It's a great word when there's a smell involved with food. <laughs> it says the smell kind of almost floats through the room. In the story it was used, it was during a routine day, amidst the aroma of freshly brewed coffee. Stumble upon. I like this phrase a lot. Used it hundreds of times. Stum, bull, stumble, upon, a uh, pawn. To stumble upon something. It's a phrase that means to discover or encounter something unexpectedly or by chance. To come across something accidentally. An example sentence could be, while hiking in the woods, they stumbled upon an abandoned cabin hidden among the trees. In the story, it was used in this sentence. It was during a routine day. Amidst the aroma of freshly brewed coffee, that Tom stumbled upon a conversation that would pivot the trajectory of the morning brew. To pivot, it means to shift or change direction, focus or strategy in response to new information or circumstances. To make a significant adjustment or alteration. An example sentence could be, the company decided to pivot its business model in order to adapt to the changing market trends. In the story, it was part of this interesting sentence. It was during a routine day, amidst the aroma of freshly brewed coffee, that Tom stumbled upon a conversation that would pivot the trajectory of the morning brew. Trajectory. Tra, tra, trajectory, trajectory, trajectory. As something goes up like that and then down. The definition of is the path followed by an object or business's course or direction, especially when seen developing over time. An example sentence could be the trajectory of the rocket was carefully calculated to ensure it reached its intended destination. In the story, it was discussed as, it was during a routine day, amidst the aroma of freshly brewed coffee, that Tom stumbled upon a conversation that would pivot the trajectory of the morning brew. Lamenting, lament, oh, lamenting over this. That's really what it means, that action I just took. Pronunciation, lamenting, lamenting. It means expressing grief, sorrow, or disappointment about something, regretting a loss or unfortunate situation. An example sentence could be, she spent the evening lamenting over the missed opportunity to attend the concert. In the story, it was Sarah and Mike Two regulars were lamenting the lack of a tranquil space for impromptu business meetings. A lack of something. It means the absence or shortage of something. The state of not having enough of a particular thing or quality. An example sentence could be the lack of sunlight in the winter months 
can lead to a vitamin D deficiency. In the story, it was used as Sarah and Mike, two regulars, were lamenting over the lack of a tranquil space for impromptu business meetings. Tranquil. Now, tranquil was difficult for me to come up with a way to write this out. So it's just tranquil, tranquil, tranquil is the way it comes out. It's a really nice word. The definition is calm, peaceful, and free from disturbance or agitation, characterized by a serene and quiet atmosphere. An example would be she found solace in the tranquil beauty of the countryside, far away from the noise of the city. In the story, it was Sarah and Mike, two regulars, were lamenting the lack of a tranquil space for impromptu business meetings. Impromptu. <laughs> this is a word that gives lots of my clients trouble. But it's just impromptu. Impromptu. <laughs> Sounds a little strange, looks even more strange. But just say it. Say it with confidence. Impromptu. The definition is it's done or said without advanced preparation or planning spontaneous or improvised. An example sentence would be, they decided to have an impromptu picnic in the park when the weather unexpectedly cleared up. In the story, the sentence was, Sarah and Mike, two regulars, were lamenting the lack of a tranquil space for impromptu business meetings. Revelation. 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 Revelation, a surprising and previously unknown fact, discovery, or piece of information that is revealed to someone. The scientist's experiment led to a groundbreaking revelation about the nature of the universe. This revelation was a light bulb moment for Tom. Light bulb moment. Just a light bulb moment. A sudden moment of realization, clarity, or understanding. An instant when something becomes clear or obvious. As she listened to the speaker, she had a light bulb moment and finally understood the concept she had been struggling with. In the story, it was in this sentence. This revelation was a light bulb moment for Tom. Oversight. Oversight. It means a failure to notice or consider something, a mistake or error resulting from not paying enough attention to detail. The company's decision to overlook the potential market demand for their product was a costly oversight. In the story, it was used in this sentence. He realized his oversight and not fully grasping his clientele's needs. Grasping, grasping, grasping. It means understanding or comprehending something fully, gaining a firm hold or comprehension of a concept or idea. An example sentence could be, after studying the material for several hours, she finally felt like she was grasping the difficult concepts. In the story, it was used as, he realized his oversight and not fully grasping his clientele's needs. Clientele. It's a strange looking word, but it's very common to have clientele. And it's just that, clientele. It means the customers or clients of a particular business or organization. The people who regularly use or patronize a service or establishment. An example sentence could be, the restaurant's clientele included a mix of locals and tourists who enjoy its unique cuisine. In the story, the sentence was, he realized his oversight and not fully grasping his clientele's needs. Determine. <laughs> Many of my clients struggle with the pronunciation of this word. You see the word mine and you want to say determine. 
it's really common to hear this. But unfortunately, English is crazy, and it's determined, determined, determined. And the definition is, here's a great word for you, to ascertain, you understand, to ascertain or establish something exactly or authoritatively to decide or conclude after consideration of, or investigation. An example sentence would be, the committee will determine the best course of action based on the available evidence. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Determined, Tom embarked on a mission the following day, engaging in candid conversations with his patrons. Embark. It's pronounced just like that. Embark. Embark. To start or undertake a journey, venture, or a new project, especially one that involves some degree of risk or effort. An example sentence would be, after years of planning, they finally embarked on their round-the-world trip. In the story, it was used as determined. Tom embarked on a mission the following day, engaging in candid conversations with his patrons. Engaging. I couldn't come up with a great way to spell this in a way that would make you help you be able to pronounce it. It's just engaging, engaging. It means capturing one's attention or interest, compelling, interesting, or attractive in a way that encourages involvement or participation. An example would be, the speaker delivered an engaging presentation that kept the audience enthralled from start to finish. In the story, it was used determine, Tom embarked on a mission the following day, engaging in candid conversations with his patrons. Candid. Just like it's spelled. Candid. Candid. It means honest, open, and straightforward in speech or expression. Frank and sincere without reservation or concealment. You're not hiding anything. An example would be, she appreciated his candid feedback, even though it was sometimes difficult to hear. In the story, it was this sentence again. Determined, Tom embarked on a mission the following day, engaging in candid conversations with his patrons. Patrons. It's a common word. It's customers. And, uh, but difficult for lots of people to pronounce. So patrons, patrons. It means customers or clients who regularly visit or use a particular business, service, or establishment. An example sentence could be the art gallery's patrons included both local art enthusiasts and tourists visiting the city. In the story, it was this same sentence. Determined, Tom embarked on a mission the following day, engaging in candid conversations with his patrons. Revealing, revealing, revealing. It means providing insight or understanding, disclosing or uncovering previously unknown or hidden information. An example sentence could be, the report contained revealing details about the company's financial performance. In the story, it was the feedback was revealing. Common thread. Thread is the same pronunciation as bread. I want to eat some bread. Thread has a TH in it, which is going to be difficult for many of you, but thread. <laughs> THR is even more difficult. <laughs> but it's just like bread, but with a TH. Thread. Common thread. It means a recurring theme, idea, or characteristic that is shared among multiple situations, events, or pieces of information. An example would be, throughout the artist's work, a common thread of nature and humanity was evident. And in the story, it was a common thread emerged, the desire for a serene meeting space. Emerge. It's a strange word. 
from a pronunciation standpoint, it's not really emerge. And so I wrote uh, merge, emerge, to emerge from something. It's really that, the way it sounds to me. The definition is to become apparent, visible, or known, to come into existence, or become noticeable. An example sentence would be, after years of research, a pattern began to emerge from the data. In the story, it was a common thread emerged, the desire for a serene meeting space. Serene, <laughs> beautiful word, by the way. Serene, serene, put it together, serene. It means calm, peaceful, untroubled, free from disturbance or agitation. An example sentence could be, she found the view of the mountains to be incredibly serene, allowing her to relax and clear her mind. In the story, it was a common thread emerged, the desire for a serene meeting space. Fueled by, I had to smile when I wrote the pronunciation, my crazy pronunciation here, but it's really fueled, 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 uh, because many people have great difficulty pronouncing this word. So just say the word fuel and then L, fueled. The definition is driven or motivated by, powered or sustained by a particular force, influence, or factor. An example sentence could be, his passion for music was fueled by his love for playing the guitar. In the story, the, the sentence was, fueled by this insight, Tom undertook a transformative initiative. Insight. Just like that. Insight. Insight. The definition is a deep understanding or perception of a situation, issue, or person. The ability to grasp the inner nature or underlying truth of something. In the example, an example sentence could be her insights into human behavior made her an effective counselor. In the story, the example was fueled by this insight, Tom undertook a transformative initiative to undertake, using undertook in the sentence. The definition to commit oneself and begin an action or task to take on responsibility or obligation. An example sentence could be, she decided to undertake the challenge of climbing Mount Everest. In the story, it was past tense, so undertook. Fueled by this insight, Tom undertook a transformative initiative. Initiative. A lot of people struggle with the pronunciation of this word. You know, if you struggle with the pronunciation of these words, use Elsa Speak. It's a great app. And you can put in a specific word in there and just put the word in under the dictionary, type it in, and it will say the word for you. Initiative. So, in ish a -tiv. Initiative. Initiative. The definition is a significant action or project that brings about change or improvement in a particular situation or context. An example sentence could be, the company's investment in communication training was a fantastic initiative. In the story, the sentence was, fueled by this insight, Tom undertook a transformative initiative. Reimagine. I struggled with this, trying to be able to spell out imagine. But it's re-imagine, in reimagine, reimagine, like imagination, reimagine. To rethink something in a new or different way, to envision or reinterpret something with creativity and innovation. An example sentence could be: The architect sought to reimagine the city skyline with sustainable and eco-friendly designs. In the story, it was, he reimagined a section of his shop into a serene nook, designed for discussions. 
Nook. It's pronounced the same as book or look. It means a small, secluded, or cozy corner or area, typically within a larger space. It's often used for relaxation, reading, or quiet activities. An example sentence could be, she curled up with a book in the cozy nook by the window. In the story, it was, he reimagined a section of his shop into a serene nook designed for discussions. Handpicked. Pronounced just like it looks. Handpicked. It means selected carefully or personally by hand, often implying meticulous, there's a great word, meticulous attention to detail or high quality. An example sentence would be, the chef used only the finest hand-picked ingredients for his signature dish. In the story, it was this sentence. He also introduced an express meeting combo, a hand-picked offering of coffee and snacks tailored for the business community. Tailored. Tailor is like somebody that makes a shirt for you, a tailor, a suit. Tailored, tailored, tailored. It means customized or adjusted to meet specific needs, preferences, or requirements, made to fit or suit a particular purpose or individual. An example sentence would be, the training program was tailored to address the unique challenges faced by the employees. In the story, it was the same sentence. He also introduced an express meeting combo, a hand-picked offering of coffee and snacks tailored for the business community. Resounding, resounding, resounding. <laughs> With a little attitude, resounding. Like it's a, it's a great word. It means remarkable or impressive in magnitude, extent, or effect producing a strong and positive response or impact. An example sentence would be, the team's victory was met with resounding cheers from the fans. In the story, the sentence was, the initiative was a resounding success, propelling the morning brew into the limelight within the professional circles. Propelling, 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 like a propeller on a boat. Driving or moving something forward or upward, causing something to advance or progress rapidly. An example sentence would be, the strong winds were propelling the sailboat across the water. In the story, it was used in this same sentence. The initiative was a resounding success, propelling the morning brew into the limelight within the professional circles. Limelight. Limelight, just like it looks. The definition is intense public attention or scrutiny. That's another good word for you, scrutiny. The focus of widespread public interest or admiration, like movie stars, athletes. An example sentence would be, after winning the championship, the athlete found himself in the limelight with reporters clamoring for interviews. Strange word for you, clamoring really wanting something. In the sentence, in the story, it was used as, the initiative was a resounding success, propelling the morning brew into the limelight within the professional circles. Burgeoned. This is a really good word. Difficult to pronounce, horrible to look at. Burgeoned. Burgeoned. Just like that, burgeoned. Say it with confidence. Burgeoned. Because it's something that's growing big, expanding, burgeoned. So it needs a little confidence when you say it. You can't really say something burgeoned. It doesn't fit. So it means to grow or expand rapidly, to increase or flourish quickly and abundantly. An example would be with the rise of e-commerce, online retailing burgeoned, transforming the shopping landscape. In the story, it was used in this sentence, the shop burgeoned transforming into not just a coffee haven, but a beacon of convenience for business 
get-togethers. Transforming means changing or altering something significantly, often resulting in a fundamental shift in its form, nature, or appearance. An example could be the city skyline was transforming with the construction of new skyscrapers and buildings. In the story, the sentence was, the shop burgeoned, transforming into not just a coffee haven, but a beacon of convenience for business get-togethers. Haven, haven, haven. A place of safety, refuge, or comfort a sanctuary or shelter from danger or distress. An example sentence could be, after a long day at work, the park became her haven where she could unwind and relax. In the story, the sentence was, the shop virgin, transforming into not just a coffee haven, but a beacon of convenience for business get-togethers. A beacon. Strange sounding word when I say it, beacon. It means something that serves as a guiding or illuminating influence, a source of inspiration or guidance. His dedication to his craft was a beacon of inspiration for aspiring artists. In the story, it was used as the same sentence, the shop burgeoned, transforming into not just a coffee haven, but a beacon of convenience for business get-togethers. Get-togethers. <laughs> Maybe it means what you think it means, to get together. It means informal gatherings or meetings where people come together for socializing, discussion, or activities. An example sentence could be, we often have family get-togethers on weekends where we catch up and spend time together. In the story, it was used in this great sentence, the shop burgeoned, transforming into not just a coffee haven, but a beacon of convenience for business get-togethers. Say that sentence a whole bunch of times. That's a really difficult sentence. It's very good for you. You build confidence. Ingenuity. That's a horrible looking word, but let's break it down. In, gen, New iti. Ingenuity. Ingenuity. It might be a horrible looking word, but it's a great word. Ingenuity. When you get to this point, just relax and say it. Ingenuity. It means cleverness, creativity, and resourcefulness in solving problems or overcoming challenges. The ability to devise innovative solutions. An example sentence could be, his ingenuity in designing the new product helped the company stay ahead of its competitors. In the story, it was Tom's ingenuity didn't stop there. To iterate, it, er, eight, iterate. It means to repeat or perform a process or procedure multiple times, typically with variations or adjustments made each time in order to improve or refine the outcome. An example sentence would be the software developer iterated on the design of the app based on user feedback to enhance its usability. This word is used all the time in the tech world with software, social media, everything. You're always listening to your customers, listening to feedback, and iterating. They, in this story, it was used as he continued to iterate based on customer feedback. Incorporating. 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 Including or integrating something as part of a whole. Combining or adding something into a larger entity or system. An example sentence could be, the company is incorporating the latest technology into its manufacturing process. In the story, it was used as, he continued to iterate based on customer feedback, incorporating Wi-Fi and adding more power outlets. Augmenting. 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 It's a really good word. 
It means increasing the size, extent, or strength of something by adding to or enhancing it, making something greater or more intense. An example sentence would be this, the new software update aims at augmenting the functionality of the app with additional features. In the story it was used, he continued to iterate based on customer feedback, incorporating Wi-Fi, augmenting the space with power outlets. Ample, Ampel, Ample, Ample, Ample. It means plentiful or more than enough in size, quantity, or capacity, sufficient to meet one's needs or requirements. An example sentence could be, the hotel offered ample parking space for its guests. In the story, it was, he continued to iterate based on customer feedback, incorporating Wi-Fi, augmenting the space with ample power outlets. Rolling out, a phrasal verb, to roll out something. It means introducing or implementing something new or updated, typically on a large scale, gradually releasing or deploying a product, service, or initiative to the target audience. An example sentence could be, the company is rolling out its new line of smartphones across multiple markets next month. And in the story, it was, he continued to iterate based on customer feedback, incorporating Wi-Fi, augmenting the space with ample power outlets, and rolling out a loyalty program, further cementing his shop's reputation. To further cement something. Even though further has a U in it, I wouldn't, I don't even think of a U when I pronounce it. Fur, ther, further. Su, set, cementing, cementing, cementing. Further cementing. Further cementing. Further cementing. It means strengthening or solidifying something. Often an existing relationship or reputation by making it more secure, more established. An example sentence could be, the successful completion of the project further cemented their partnership with the client. In the story, it was the same sentence. He continued to iterate based on customer feedback, incorporating Wi-Fi, augmenting the space with ample power outlets, and rolling out a loyalty program, further cementing his shop's reputation. 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 It means the beliefs or opinions that are generally held about someone or something. The state of being held in high esteem or regard by others. An example could be the restaurant's excellent service and delicious food have earned it a stellar reputation in the community. Stellar. In the example sentence, uh, it was used as part of the sentence that we've seen a few times. Further cementing his shop's reputation. Evolved. E evolved, evolved. To develop or change gradually over time, often resulting in a more advanced or improved state. An example sentence could be, the company's product line has evolved significantly since its inception, incorporating the latest technology and customer feedback. In the story, it was used in this sentence, as the morning brew evolved, it became emblematic of how attentiveness to customer feedback and agility in business strategies foster success. What a fantastic sentence. <laughs> Let's go through these other words in here. Emblematic. 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 It just means representing or symbolizing something often serving as a distinctive or characteristic example of a larger concept or idea. An example sentence would be the bald eagle. It's emblematic of strength and freedom in American culture. 
in the story, it was used in this great sentence. As the morning brew evolved, it became emblematic of how attentiveness to customer feedback and agility in business strategies fostered success. Attentiveness. To be attentive. Attentiveness. It means the quality of being observant, alert, and responsive to details or needs, showing careful consideration and focus. An example sentence would be, her attentiveness to her patient's concerns made her an exceptional nurse. In the story, it was, as the morning brew evolved, it became emblematic of how attentiveness to customer feedback and agility and business strategies foster success. Agility. 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 It's a really good business word. Say it with me. Agility. It means the ability to move quickly and easily. Flexibility and adaptability and responding to changing circumstances or demands. An example sentence would be the startup success was attributed to its agility in adjusting its business model to meet market demands. In our example story, it was, as the morning brew evolved, it became emblematic of how attentiveness to customer feedback and agility in business strategies foster success. Foster, foster, foster. It means to promote or encourage the growth, development, or success of something, to nurture or support the advancement of a particular idea, relationship, or outcome. An example sentence could be, the mentor sought to foster a sense of confidence and independence in her protege. In the story, the sentence is, as the morning brew evolved, it became emblematic of how attentiveness to customer feedback and agility in business strategies foster success. Proud. It's pronounced just like loud, except for the PR in it. Proud. And it means feeling a sense of satisfaction, pleasure, or fulfillment in one's achievements, abilities, or qualities. Having a deep sense of honor or dignity. An example sentence could be, she felt proud of her team's accomplishments during the project. In the story, the sentence was, Tom was proud of what he had achieved. Humble, humble, humble. Having or showing a modest or low estimate of one's own importance, abilities, or achievements, not boastful or arrogant. An example sentence could be, despite his success, he remained humble and grateful for the opportunities he had been given. In the story, the sentence is, proud yet humble. Tom acknowledged that the cornerstone of his success was the invaluable insights from his patrons. Acknowledged. And it's really pronounced acknowledged. 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 Recognized or accepted as valid, true, or existing. To admit the existence or truth of something. She acknowledged her mistake and apologized to her colleague. In the story, the sentence is, proud yet humble. Tom acknowledged that the cornerstone of his success was the invaluable insights from his patrons. Cornerstone. 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 It's the fundamental or essential basis or foundation of something, the most important part or element upon which everything else depends. An example sentence would be, trust is the cornerstone of any successful relationship. In the story, 
the sentence again is proud yet humble. Tom acknowledged that the cornerstone of his success was the invaluable insights from his patrons. Invaluable. Invaluable. I smile, I laugh, because this is a difficult word for so many to pronounce. So let's try it in my crazy way of doing it. In val you bull. Invaluable. 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 <laughs> Say it with confidence. It means extremely useful, indispensable, or highly valuable, of great worth or importance, often beyond measure. An example sentence could be, her mentor's guidance and advice were invaluable to her career development. In the story, the, sen the sentence again is, proud yet humble, Tom acknowledged that the cornerstone of his success was the invaluable insights from his patrons. To take notice. To take notice means to become aware of something, to pay attention to or recognize a particular person, thing, or situation. An example sentence could be, the manager took notice of the employee's dedication and hard work. In the story, the sentence is, the local business community took notice. And soon, Tom was invited to share his journey at a gathering of entrepreneurs. Peers. Peers. I didn't know how else to... <laughs> put my little method here, so just peers. It means individuals who are equal in standing, rank, or age, colleagues or associates who share similar roles, experiences, or interests. An example sentence would be, she sought feedback from her peers before finalizing the project proposal. In the story, the sentence is, addressing a room of peers, Tom began esteemed colleagues, esteemed colleagues. This is quite formal and it's also, also very polite. Esteemed, co dear esteemed colleagues. It's a very nice thing to say and it's quite common. The definition is respected and highly regarded individuals who share a professional or academic environment, esteemed associates or fellow professionals. An example sentence could be, the award was presented to my esteemed colleagues in recognition of their outstanding contributions to the field. In the, set, in the story, the sentence began, addressing a room full of esteemed colleagues, Tom began narrative, 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 in this case, narratives, a story or account of events, experiences, or happenings, usually presented in a structured or chronological manner. That means it goes in order of time. An example would be the novel's narrative follows the journey of the protagonist through various challenges and triumphs. In the story, the sentence is, addressing a room of esteemed colleagues, Tom began, good evening, everyone. My narrative today revolves around a modest coffee shop that dared to listen, adapt, and thrive. I want you to say it just like that. To revolve around something. Revolve. Revolve. Pronunciation again. Revolves around. And it means to be central or focused on. To have a central theme or subject. An example sentence could be the plot of the movie revolves around the protagonist's quest for redemption. In the Story, the sentence is, addressing a room of esteemed colleagues, Tom began, good evening, everyone. My narrative today 
revolves around a modest coffee shop that dared to listen, adapt, and thrive. Dared. Again, the pronunciation is dared. To have the courage or audacity to do something, especially something considered bold, risky, or unconventional. An example sentence could be, despite the odds, she dared to pursue her dreams of becoming an artist. In the, sentence, in the story, the sentence again is, addressing a room of esteemed colleagues, Tom began. Good evening, everyone. My narrative today revolves around a modest coffee shop that dared to listen, adapt, and thrive. To adapt. Uh, Adapt, adapt, to adjust or modify in response to new conditions, circumstances, or situations, to change or evolve in order to better fit or suit a particular environment or need. An example sentence could be, plants adapt to their surroundings by developing different growth patterns. In the story, again, the sentence is, addressing a room of esteemed colleagues, Tom began, Good evening, everyone. My narrative today revolves around a modest coffee shop that dared to listen, adapt, and thrive. Let's look at thrive. Thrive is just like drive, to drive a car, but with a TH in front, which many of you don't like that TH. Thrive. It means to grow, develop, or prosper vigorously, to flourish or succeed, especially in adverse or challenging conditions. An example sentence could be, despite the economic downturn, the small business continued to thrive due to its loyal customer base. In the sentence in the story, it is addressing a room of esteemed colleagues. Tom began, good evening, everyone. My narrative today revolves around a modest coffee shop that dared to listen, adapt, and thrive. Okay, that sentence is over. Underscores, just like it looks, underscores. It means... It emphasizes or highlights the importance or significance of something. It serves to draw attention to a particular point or aspect. An example sentence would be, his success underscores the importance of perseverance and hard work. In the story, the example sentence is, it underscores the essence of business, the profound impact of nurturing it customer-centric ethos. Oh, so proud and formal. Essence. 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 It means the fundamental nature or intrinsic quality of something, the most important or essential aspect or characteristic. An example sentence would be, the essence of the novel lies in its exploration of human relationships. In the story, the sentence was, it underscores the essence of business, the profound impact of nurturing a customer-centric ethos. A profound impact. Pro, found, profound, im, pact. Impact, profound impact. So this is a phrase, two separate words here, but profound is important and impact is makes some type of effect on something. So I def included them together. A profound impact. It means a deep and significant influence or effect, often with far reaching implications or consequences. An example sentence would be, his words had a profound impact on her, prompting her to reconsider her beliefs. In the story, the sentence is, it underscores the essence of business, the profound impact of nurturing a customer-centric ethos. 
nurturing. There's a couple of U's in there, but I don't feel any U's when I pronounce this word. So let's do it this way. Nurturing. 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 It means providing care, support, and encouragement for the growth and development of someone or something. Fostering an environment conducive to progress or well-being. An example sentence would be, the teacher was dedicated to nurturing her students' creativity and confidence. In the, in the story, again, the sentence is, it underscores the essence of business, the profound impact of nurturing a customer-centric ethos. Centric ethos. You already know customer. So let me try to help with centric ethos. First, the pronunciation, sen, trick, centric, ethos, ethos, customer-centric ethos, centric ethos. It's a guiding principle or core belief that places a particular focus or importance on a central element or aspect, often with the aim of shaping attitudes, behaviors, or decision-making processes. An example sentence would be, their company's customer-centric ethos prioritizes customer satisfaction in all business practices. Again, in the story, it is, it underscores the essence of business, the profound impact of nurturing a customer-centric ethos. Pursuit. I look at this at the beginning as just per, per this, per these instructions, per this situation, per suit, pursuit. And the definition of pursuit is the act of striving towards or seeking something, often with determination or dedication, an effort or endeavor to achieve a goal or objective. An example sentence would be, his relentless pursuit of excellence propelled him to the top of his field. Ooh, what a sentence. In the story, the sentence is, in our pursuit of growth and innovation, let's not overlook the fundamental principle that our enterprises are ultimately about serving people. Overlook. It means to fail to notice or consider something, to disregard or ignore something, typically unintentionally. An example sentence could be, she accidentally overlooked the typo in the document before submitting it. <laughs> something I've done hundreds of times. In the example sentence in the story, it's in our pursuit of growth and innovation, Let's not overlook the fundamental principle that our enterprises are ultimately about serving people. Principle. Principle. I look at it as prince a bull. Principle. 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 It's a fundamental truth or belief that serves as the foundation for a system of thought or behavior a guiding rule or code of conduct. An example sentence would be, honesty is a principle that he always adheres to, no matter the circumstances. In the story, the example was, in our pursuit of growth and innovation, let's not overlook the fundamental principle that our enterprises are ultimately about serving people. Enterprises. Enter. And then prizes, enterprises. And it means a project, undertaking, or business venture, typically one that involves significant effort or risk with the aim of achieving a particular goal or outcome. An example sentence could be, the company's latest enterprise aims to revolutionize the renewable energy industry. In the example sentence in the story, it is, in our pursuit of growth and innovation, let's not overlook the fundamental principle that our enterprises are ultimately about serving people. Ultimately. This is a hard word for people to pronounce often. 
So let's break it down. Al ta mit li. It's, there's no, the word mate is in there, but you don't pronounce mate when you say this word. So it's ultimately, ultimately. And it means referring to the final or eventual outcome or conclusion, indicating the most important or fundamental aspect of a situation. An example sentence could be, ultimately, his hard work and dedication paid off when he achieved his lifelong dream. Again, the example sentence in the story is, in our pursuit of growth and innovation, let's not overlook the fundamental principle that our enterprises are ultimately about serving people. Such a good sentence. <laughs> a transformation. And it sounds just like it looks. Transformation, transformation, transformation. A thorough that word is pronounced thur o thur o that's a great word a thorough or dramatic change in form appearance nature or character the process of undergoing such change an example would be a, a caterpillar's transformation into a butterfly is a beautiful metaphor for personal growth and change the example sentence in the story is the shop burgeoned transforming into not just a coffee haven, but a beacon of convenience for business get-togethers. Exemplifies. 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 This is a great word. It exemplifies something. Just relax and let it come out. Exemplifies. To serve as a typical or perfect example of to illustrate or demonstrate something effectively. An example sentence would be, the dedication and hard work of the athletes exemplify the spirit of teamwork and perseverance. In the story, the example sentence is, the morning brew's transformation from just another coffee shop to a cornerstone of the business community exemplifies the power of engaging and responding to the needs of our clientele. Engaging with. I couldn't come up with a good pronunciation for engaging, but engaging with, engaging with. It means to actively interact or involve oneself with someone or something, to participate or communicate effectively with others. An example sentence would be, the teacher focuses on engaging with her students to create a dynamic learning environment. In the story, the sentence was, Tom's narrative underscored the importance of engaging with customers to understand their needs and preferences. Imparted, imparted. It means to communicate or convey information, knowledge, or wisdom to others, to share or bestow something valuable or meaningful, to give something. An example would be the mentor imparted valuable advice to her protege before they embarked on their journey. In the story, the sentence was, concluding his talk, Tom imparted. To all aspiring and established entrepreneurs here, I leave you with this thought. The essence of business success lies in the value we provide to our customers. Established. It means to set up, founded, or introduce something on a firm and stable basis to create or develop something that endures over time. An example sentence would be, the company was established over a century ago and has since become a leader in its industry. In the story, it was used as, to all aspiring and established entrepreneurs here, I leave you with this thought. The essence of business success lies in the value we provide to our customers. Lies in. The phrasal verb, to lie in something. And it means this. Exists or is found within a particular aspect, element, or factor 
to be primarily located or centered in a specific context or condition. An example sentence would be, the key to success often lies in perseverance and resilience in the face of challenges. In the story, it was again in this sentence, to all aspiring and established entrepreneurs here, I leave you with this thought. The essence of business success lies in the value we provide to our customers. Such a beautiful sentence. Resonance. 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 It means a strong and meaningful impact or connection. The ability to evoke emotions, thoughts, or memories in a powerful and lasting way. An example sentence would be, the speaker's words had a deep resonance with the audience, leaving a lasting impression on everyone present. In the story, it was in this sentence, the audience's response was a testament to the resonance of Tom's message. Moving. Moving has many different definitions. This is an interesting one. In this case, it means stirring or evoking strong emotions, such as sympathy, empathy, or inspiration, deeply affecting or touching. An example sentence would be, the movie's powerful soundtrack added to the emotional impact of its moving scenes. In the story, the example was, the audience's response was a testament to the resonance of Tom's message. It served as a moving reminder that in the dynamic realm of business, success is intricately tied to our ability to connect with and understand the needs of those we serve. Dynamic realm. Dynamic, dynamic realm. The word realm is difficult because it doesn't sound like it looks. There's no realm. It's realm. So think of long L's, long M's, realm. Dynamic realm. The constantly changing and evolving environment or sphere of activity characterized by energy, movement, and innovation. An example sentence could be, the technology industry is a dynamic realm where new developments and advancements occur rapidly. In the story, again, it was part of this message. It served as a moving reminder that in the dynamic realm of business, Success is intricately tied to our ability to connect with and understand the needs of those we serve. Intricately. 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 It's not a very nice looking word, is it? But if you just follow that, intricately. Intricately. It's a great word. In a detailed, complex, or elaborate manner, involving many interconnected parts or aspects. An example sentence would be, the design of the cathedral's stained glass windows was intricately crafted with intricate patterns and colors. In the story, again, it was in this sentence, it served as a moving reminder that in the dynamic realm of business, success is intricately tied to our ability to connect with and understand the needs of those we serve. Wave. Wave has many different meanings. Here it means a sudden increase or surge in activity, often characterized by a rapid and widespread occurrence of something. An example sentence would be, there was a wave of excitement among the crowd as the concert began. In the story, the sentence was, Tom's narrative inspired a wave of entrepreneurs to adopt a more listener-oriented approach in their ventures. Oriented. 
oriented, oriented. It means adjusted or directed towards a particular direction, interest or purpose, aligned with a specific objective or goal. An example sentence would be, the new employee orientation program helped newcomers become familiar with the company's policies and procedures. A story in the story, it was in this sentence, Tom's narrative inspired a wave of an entrepreneurs to adopt a more listener-oriented approach in their ventures. Odyssey. 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 Uh, it doesn't really sound like what it looks like, but it's just odd i Odyssey. A long and eventful journey, often marked by notice, notable experiences, challenges, and discoveries. An example sentence could be, after years of traveling and exploring different cultures, the artist considered her life a fascinating odyssey. In the story, it was used in this sentence. In essence, Tom's odyssey with the morning brew was not merely about the evolution of a coffee shop, but a lesson in the fundamental tenets of business success. Wow, what a sentence. Merely, merely, merely. It's a good word. It means used to emphasize that something is no more than what is specified, only or simply. Or good words instead of merely, only, simply. An example would be, she didn't want to merely survive. She wanted to thrive and excel in her career. Again, in the story, it was used as, in essence, Tom's odyssey with the morning brew was not merely about the evolution of a coffee shop, but a lesson in the fundamental tenets of business success. Evolution. 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 The gradual development or change of something over time often involving growth, adaptation, or improvement. An example sentence could be, the evolution of technology has revolutionized the way we communicate and interact with the world. Again, the sentence was, in essence, Tom's odyssey with the morning brew was not merely about the evolution of a coffee shop, but a lesson in the fundamental tenets of business success. Tenants is a great word, a really great word. Um, there's a few other words that are similar in spelling, similar in pronunciation to tenants, but get to know this word. It means the fundamental principles or beliefs that form the basis of a system of thought or a particular organization's philosophy. An example sentence would be, the tenets of democracy include principles such as equality, freedom, and justice for all citizens. In the story, again, it was used in this sentence. In essence, Tom's odyssey with the morning brew was not merely about the evolution of a coffee shop, but a lesson in the fundamental tenets of business success. Empathy. Empathy, empathy, empathy. Put it all together, empathy. It means the ability to understand and share the feelings, thoughts, and perspectives of others, often leading to compassion and desire to help. An example sentence would be, her empathy allowed her to connect deeply with people, going through difficult times and offer meaningful support. In the story, it was used in this sentence. In essence, Tom's odyssey with the morning brew was not merely about the evolution of a coffee shop, but a lesson in the fundamental tenets of business success, empathy, adaptability, and the enduring value of customer satisfaction.
Adaptability. 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 It means the capacity to adjust to new conditions, environments, or circumstances. The ability to change one's actions and approaches to suit changing situations. An example sentence would be, successful entrepreneurs demonstrate adaptability by quickly adjusting their strategies in response to market changes. In the story, it was part of this great sentence. In essence, Tom's odyssey with the morning brew was not merely about the evolution of a coffee shop, but a lesson in the fundamental tenets of business success. Empathy, adaptability, and the enduring value customer satisfaction. Finally, enduring. Yes, there's a U in there, but I would pronounce it enduring. Enduring. It means persisting over a long period, remaining constant or retaining value despite challenges or the passage of time. An example sentence would be, their enduring friendship survived the ups and downs of life remaining strong through thick and thin. In the story, it was this final sentence. In essence, Tom's odyssey with the morning brew was not merely about the evolution of a coffee shop, but a lesson in the fundamental tenets of business success. Empathy, adaptability, and the enduring value of customer satisfaction. There, We have this long list of vocabulary words. I encourage you to go through all of those words with me. Make them become comfortable. Hope you become confident using them and feel great about them. Then go back to the story. Go through the story and the story will be so much easier. You will build your confidence quickly. Enjoy. Welcome to the eloquent level top level in the ladder of fluency. You had some choices of how you got to this stage. Maybe you started on the first level and you worked your way through that first level, being able to present that story on the first level, going through the vocabulary words with me, deeply learning and building your confidence using all of that great vocabulary and then presenting the entire story in a very confident way. And from there, maybe you stepped up on the ladder of fluency to the second level, the advanced level. And from there, able to take on the same story, but using more advanced business vocabulary, words, terms, and phrases. I'm sure it was a challenge on that second level. And if you got through that second level with me, you know how many words, terms, and phrases there were in that vocabulary. And I walked through each of them, and I hope you join me going through them. Because the purpose is for you to deeply learn this vocabulary. And my deep learning style is that I want you to understand the pronunciation, and really feel confident using the pronunciation, I want you to understand what the word really means in a business context. I want you to use it in an example sentence. So I provide you with an example sentence. And then we go back to the story and we put the word or term that was used in the story and show you how it was used there. And I want you to say all of this out loud with me. The words need to come out of your mouth to make your confidence level grow. That's my deep learning process. So here we are on the eloquent level. Maybe you skipped story one. Maybe you skipped story two and you took on this challenge of going right to the top of the fluency ladder. And you're at this eloquent level. Good luck. I challenge you. You have a difficult task ahead of you. However you got here, I welcome you. I challenge you to take your time and go through this with me. What it will do is it'll be very difficult the first time through. It will be. No question about it. And you'll think, come on, 
These aren't real words. Nobody uses these. It's impossible. And I can guarantee you, these are words I've used many times in the past. These are words, if you want to speak eloquently, these are words that you would use speaking English in business. That's why I've done this. I know it's a great challenge. But if you take your time and you go through this with me, and you really understand what these words mean, how to pronounce them, how to use them, and then you go back and you present the story in the same way I present it, wow, you're going to see your confidence continue to grow and grow. And you're going to keep climbing this ladder of fluency. Are you ready to start? Should we do this story? Are you up for the challenge? It's going to be difficult. Good luck to you. Here we go. In the vibrant tapestry of a bustling metropolitan landscape, there lies the Morning Brew, a quaint coffee shop that transcended its initial purpose to become a nexus for the city's business elite. Presided over by Tom, a visionary entrepreneur, this establishment carved a unique niche in the hearts of its patrons, not merely as a purveyor of exquisite coffee, but as a pivotal gathering point for dynamic discourse amongst professionals. However, amidst its burgeoning popularity, Tom confronted a bewildering challenge, the stagnation of sales. It was during an ordinary day, amidst the rich symphony of espresso machines and the subtle hum of networking professionals, that an inadvertent eavesdrop on a conversation between Sarah and Mike illuminated the path forward. They expressed a longing for a tranquil space, conducive to spontaneous business engagements within the coffee shop's lively ambiance. This insight served as a call to action for Tom. With a renewed sense of purpose, he embarked on a journey of transformation, grounded in direct engagement with his clientele. The insights garnered were illuminating, revealing a unanimous desire for a serene enclave for professional rendezvous. Armed with this knowledge, Tom initiated a strategic pivot, reconfiguring a section of the morning brew into an oasis of tranquility, perfectly tailored for business meetings. He introduced the express meeting combo, a meticulously curated offering that catered to the needs of his discerning clientele, blending efficiency with the artisanal quality of his coffee. The strategic overhaul catapulted the morning brew into a new echelon of relevance within the professional community, transforming it from a mere coffee shop into a seminal hub for business collaboration. Tom's relentless pursuit of excellence didn't wane. He continually refined his offerings based on customer feedback, integrating technological amenities like Wi-Fi, augmenting accessibility with additional power outlets, and introducing a loyalty scheme to reward patronage. As the morning brew flourished, it became emblematic of the symbiotic relationship between customer-centric innovation and business success. Tom's humility in acknowledging his clientele as the linchpin of his success story resonated deeply within the business community. The narrative of this transformation and success culminated in an invitation for Tom to share his insights at a prestigious gathering of entrepreneurs. Addressing his peers, Tom articulated, esteemed colleagues, tonight I share with you a narrative, not just of personal triumph, but of the transformative power of listening and adapting to our clientele. The Morning Brew stands as a testament to the ethos that our businesses thrive on the bedrock of understanding and meeting the needs of those we serve. He continued 
advocating for a paradigm where engagement and responsiveness to customer feedback are integral to business strategy. In this ever evolving business landscape, let us anchor ourselves in the philosophy that our primary objective is to add tangible value to our customers' lives. The journey of the Morning Brew is a compelling illustration of how customer-centric approaches can forge unparalleled avenues for growth and innovation. Tom's discourse, teeming with sincerity and insight, galvanized the audience, serving as a poignant reminder of the gravity of fostering deep connections and understanding with our clientele. In summary, the Morning Brew's evolution from a conventional coffee shop into a beacon of business innovation and collaboration underscores a universal truth in the realm of business. Success is inextricably linked to our capacity to listen, adapt, and continually strive to exceed the expectations of those we serve. Tom's journey illuminates the path for aspiring entrepreneurs, showcasing that at the heart of every successful venture lies a profound commitment to customer satisfaction and engagement. This top level of the ladder of fluency is obviously very difficult. If you skipped story one and story two and you came directly here, you'll really benefit by going back, especially to the second story and going through some of those vocabulary words. I've tried to define these vocabulary words once throughout this entire storyline. So there are many words in this third story that were used in the second story and maybe even some in the first story. But many of these were used in the second story and will be defined in the second story. So if you can't find something inside of this list of vocabulary words for this story, it just means that I used it earlier and it should be found in the second story. So take your time, rewind the video, use the bookmarks and go back and find where the words are that you would like to find some additional information on. I hope that makes sense. Instead of repeating all of these words, I tried to do them just once. So there'll be less words in this list because story two has so many. Okay, I hope that makes sense for you. Now, let me go through a deep learning process of all of the words in story three. Enjoy. Tapestry, tapestry, tapestry. It means a rich and intricate combination or arrangement of various elements. An example sentence could be, the tapestry of cultures in the city creates a vibrant and diverse community. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. In the vibrant tapestry of a bustling metropolitan landscape. Metropolitan landscape. Metropolitan landscape. It means like an urban area characterized by buildings, streets, and infrastructure. An example sentence could be, our company headquarters is located in the heart of the metropolitan landscape. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. In the vibrant tapestry of a bustling metropolitan landscape, transcended, transcended, transcended. It means surpassed or moved beyond. An example sentence could be, the company transcended its humble beginnings to become an industry leader. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. A quaint coffee shop that transcended its initial purpose to become a nexus for the city's business elite. Purpose. This word is difficult for lots of people to pronounce. So just look at it. Just per 
Purpus. Purpose. Purpose. The reason for existence or intended function. An example sentence could be, our purpose is to provide high quality services to our customers. In the story, it was part of this sentence, a quaint coffee shop that transcended its initial purpose to become a nexus for the city's business elite. Nexus. Neck. Sus. Nexus. It means the central point of connection or intersection. An example could be the city's airport serves as a nexus for travelers from around the world. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. A quaint coffee shop that transcended its initial purpose to become a nexus for the city's business elite. 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 It means a select group considered superior in terms of status, wealth, or ability. An example could be the elite members of the club enjoy exclusive privileges and benefits. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence, a quaint coffee shop that transcended its initial purpose to become a nexus for the city's business elite. Presided over. Presided over. Presided over. Presided over. It means supervised or managed. An example could be the CEO presided over the board meeting to discuss the company's future plans. In the story, it was as part of this sentence. Presided over by Tom, a visionary entrepreneur. Visionary. Forward thinking. Innovative. An example would be Steve Jobs was known as a visionary leader who revolutionized the technology industry. In the story, it was part of this sentence. Presided over by Tom, a visionary entrepreneur. Carved. I didn't know how to write this out, so just carved. Carved. It means created or established through effort and skill. The artist carved a beautiful sculpture out of marble. In the story, it was part of this sentence. The establishment carved a unique niche in the hearts of its patrons. Unique niche. Unique niche. Unique niche. The definition is distinctive and specialized position or role. An example sentence could be, the artisan bakery found a unique niche by specializing in gluten-free pastries. In the story, it was written as, this establishment carved a unique niche in the hearts of its patrons. Purveyor. 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 The supplier or provider of goods or services. An example sentence could be, the local bakery prides itself on being a purveyor of fresh bread and pastries. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence, not merely as a purveyor of exquisite coffee. Exquisite. What a great word. Ex quiz it. Exquisite. Exquisite. Let it all come together and put some feeling into it. Exquisite means extremely beautiful, excellent, or fine. A restaurant served an exquisite meal prepared by a renowned chef. In the story, it was not merely as a purveyor of exquisite coffee. Discourse amongst. Discourse amongst. Discourse amongst. Discourse amongst means conversation or discussion involving something. Example sentences. The discourse amongst scholars 
focused on the future of artificial intelligence. In the story, it was used as a pivotal gathering point for dynamic discourse amongst professionals. Burgeoning, 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 burgeoning means growing or expanding rapidly. The burgeoning tech industry attracted investors from around the world. In the story, it was, however, amidst its burgeoning popularity, Tom confronted a bewildering challenge. Confronted, 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 faced or dealt with. She confronted her fear of public speaking by joining a debate club. In the story, it was, however, amidst its burgeoning popularity, Tom confronted a bewildering challenge. Bewildering, what a great word. Be, will, der, in. Bewildering. Confusing or perplexing, causing a sense of bewilderment or puzzlement. An example would be the complex instructions were bewildering to the new employees. In the story, again, it was part of this sentence. Amidst its burgeoning popularity, Tom confronted a bewildering challenge. Stagnation, 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 stagnation. A state of little or no growth, development or progress. An example would be the company faced stagnation due to lack of innovation and market expansion. In the story, again, as part of this sentence, however, Amidst its burgeoning popularity, Tom confronted a bewildering challenge, the stagnation of sales. Rich symphony. Rich symphony. A rich symphony. A harmonious blend of various elements, often used metaphorically to describe a vibrant atmosphere. There's a sentence for you. Example sentence could be, the bustling streets echoed with the rich symphony of honking horns and lively chatter, as you would find in Vietnam. In the story, it was used as part of the sentence. It was during an ordinary day, amidst the rich symphony of espresso machines and the subtle hum of networking professionals. Subtle. Subtle hum. The B is not pronounced. Subtle. Subtle. Hum. A soft, gentle sound, usually continuous and soothing. An example could be in the library, there was a subtle hum of whispered conversations and rustling pages. In the story, it was again part of the sentence. Amidst the rich symphony of espresso machines and the subtle hum of networking professionals. Inadvertent. 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 Not intended or planned. Unintentional. An example could be his inadvertent comment offended her, though. He had not meant to cause any harm. In the sentence, it was part of this long sentence. It was during an ordinary day, amidst the rich symphony of espresso machines and the subtle hum of networking professionals, that an inadvertent eavesdrop on a conversation between Sarah and Mike illuminated the path forward. Eavesdrop. Eaves. Drop. Eavesdrop. Words more common than what you think. To secretly listen to a conversation without the knowledge of the speakers. An example could be she accidentally eavesdropped on their discussion while waiting for her coffee. In the story, it was part of this sentence that an inadvertent eavesdrop on a conversation between Sarah and Mike illuminated the path forward. Illuminated. 
illuminated. Illuminated. Illuminated. It means to make something clear or understandable, to provide insight or clarity. An example could be, his explanation illuminated the complex issue for everyone in the meeting. In the story, it was that an inadvertent eavesdrop on a conversation between Sarah and Mike illuminated the path forward. A longing for. Just like it sounds. A longing for. A longing for. A strong desire or yearning for something. She felt a longing for adventure as she gazed at the distant mountains. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. They expressed a longing for a tranquil space, conducive to spontaneous business engagements within the coffee shop's lively ambiance. Conducive. Con-du-sive. Conducive. Making a certain situation or outcome likely or possible, favorable or advantageous. An example could be, a quiet environment is conducive to focused work and productivity. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. They expressed a longing for a tranquil space, conducive to spontaneous business engagements within the coffee shop's lively ambiance. Spontaneous. 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 Spontaneous, occurring naturally, without prior planning or arrangement, impromptu. Their spontaneous laughter echoed through the room, breaking the tension. And in the story, it was part of the sentence. They expressed a longing for a tranquil space, conducive to spontaneous business engagements within the coffee shop's lively ambiance. Engagements, 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 formal arrangements or commitments, often referring to scheduled meetings or appointments. Business engagements require careful planning and coordination to ensure success. In the story, again, part of this great sentence, expressed a longing for a tranquil space, conducive, to spontaneous business engagements within the coffee shop's lively ambiance. Lively, 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 full of energy and excitement, vibrant and animated. The lively atmosphere of the party kept everyone entertained throughout the night. Again, part of this sentence expressed a longing for a tranquil space conducive to spontaneous business engagements within the coffee shop's lively ambiance. 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 The atmosphere or mood of a place, typically created by its surroundings, decor, or activities. The cozy lighting and soft music created a romantic ambiance in the restaurant. Oh, so romantic. Again, in the story, expressed a longing for a tranquil space, conducive to spontaneous business engagements within the coffee shop's lively ambiance. A call to action, just like it sounds. Call to action. A directive or a request prompting immediate action or response, often used in marketing or advocacy. The advertisement included a compelling call to action, urging viewers to sign up for the event. In the story, it was part of this sentence. This insight served as a call to action for Tom. Renew. 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 To restore or revive something to its original or better condition. To make new again. An example would be, they decided to renew their commitment to employee training at a high level. In the story, it was part of the sentence. 
With a renewed sense of purpose, he embarked on a journey of transformation. Grounded, grounded, grounded. Firmly established or rooted in a solid foundation, having a practical and realistic outlook. Her grounded approach to problem solving helped her navigate through difficult situations. In the story, it was part of this sentence. With a renewed sense of purpose, he embarked on a journey of transformation, grounded in direct engagement with his clientele. Garnered, garnered, garnered. Gathered or collected, acquired or obtained through effort or skill. The project garnered widespread praise from both clients and colleagues. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. The insights garnered were illuminating, revealing a unanimous desire for a serene enclave professional rendezvous. Unanimous. <laughs> what a crazy looking word. Let's break it down. Unanimous. 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 Fully in agreement or sharing the same opinion without any dissent or opposition. The board members reached a unanimous decision on the new budget proposal. In the story, it was the insights garnered were illuminating, revealing a unanimous desire for a serene enclave for professional rendezvous. Enclave. 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 A distinct territory or space, often within a larger area, that has its own unique characteristics or purpose. The neighborhood was known as a cultural enclave with diverse restaurants and shops. Again, in the story, it was the insights garnered were illuminating, revealing a unanimous desire for a serene enclave for professional rendezvous. Rendezvous, rendezvous. 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 <laughs> Rendezvous. A prearranged meeting or gathering, typically between two or more people. They agreed to meet at the cafe for a rendezvous to discuss the project. In the story, the insights garnered were illuminating, revealing a unanimous desire for a serene enclave for professional Rendezvous. Armed with. Just like it sounds. Armed with. Armed with. Equipped or prepared with something. Typically knowledge or resources to address a situation. An example could be armed with her research findings. She confidently presented her proposal to the team. In the story, it was part of this sentence. Armed with this knowledge. Tom initiated a strategic pivot. Reconfiguring. 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 To change the arrangement or configuration of something, often in order to improve its efficiency or effectiveness. An example could be the company reconfigured its office layout to foster collaboration among employees. In the story, it was part of this sentence. Tom initiated a strategic pivot, reconfiguring a section of the morning brew into an oasis of tranquility. Whew, what a sentence. Oasis. O-A-S-I-S. Oasis. Oasis. A peaceful or restful place amidst surrounding turmoil or difficulty, a refuge or sanctuary. The park, with its lush greenery, felt like an oasis in the midst of the city. In the story, it was part of this great sentence. Tom initiated a strategic pivot, reconfiguring a section of the morning brew into an oasis of tranquility, perfectly tailored for business meetings. 
tranquility, 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 the quality or a state of being calm, peaceful, and quiet. She sought the tranquility of the countryside to escape the hustle and bustle of the city. In the story, it was used as Tom initiated a strategic pivot, reconfiguring a section of the morning brew into an oasis of tranquility, perfectly tailored for business meetings. Meticulously. <laughs> Look at that word. <laughs> this is a great word. Meticulously. Let's look at my crazy way of doing this. Me, tick, you, less, Lee. Meticulously. 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 Done with great attention to detail. Carefully and precisely. She meticulously planned every aspect of the event to ensure its success. In the story... It was part of the sentence. He introduced the express meeting combo, a meticulously curated offering. Curated. Cure. Aided. Cure. Aided. Curated. Carefully selected, organized, and presented, often with a specific purpose or audience in mind. The museum's collection was curated to showcase the evolution of modern art. In the story, it was used this way. He introduced the express meeting combo, a meticulously curated offering that catered to the needs of his discerning clientele. Catered to. Catered. Catered designed or tailored to meet the specific needs, desires, or preferences of a particular group or individual. The hotel's amenities were catered to the needs of business travelers. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence, a meticulously curated offering that catered to the needs of his discerning clientele. Discerning. Dis- Sir Ning Discerning 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 Having or showing good judgment or keen insight, able to distinguish quality or value. The discerning customer carefully considered each product before making a purchase. In the story, again, it was part of this sentence. A meticulously curated offering that catered to the needs of his discerning clientele. Blending. 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 Combining or mixing together harmoniously. Merging different elements into a unified whole. The chef's special sauce was created by blending various herbs and spices. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. Blending efficiency with the artisanal quality of his coffee. Artisanal. R T I S A N O. Artisanal. Handcrafted or produced using traditional high quality methods, often by skilled artisans. The bakery prided itself on its artisanal bread, made fresh every morning. In the story, it was part of this sentence. Blending efficiency with the artisanal quality of his coffee. Overhaul. 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 To completely renovate, reorganize, or improve something. The company decided to overhaul its website to make it more user-friendly. In the story, it was used in this sentence. This strategic overhaul catapulted the morning brew into a new echelon of relevance within the professional community. Catapulted. Cat-a-pulted. Catapulted. 
to propel or launch something suddenly or forcefully into a new position or state. The successful advertising campaign catapulted the company into the spotlight. In the story, it was used this way. The strategic overhaul catapulted the morning brew into a new echelon of relevance within the professional community. Echelon. Esh. A. Lon. Echelon. Echelon. A level or rank in an organization, system, or hierarchy. An example could be, he quickly rose through the echelons of the company to become a senior executive. In the story, it was used in this sentence. This strategic overhaul catapulted the morning brew into a new echelon of relevance within the professional community. Relevance. Rel, a, uh, vens. Relevance. The quality of being closely connected or appropriate to the matter at hand, importance or significance. An example could be, the new research findings have direct relevance to our current project. In the story, it was again part of this sentence. The strategic overhaul catapulted the morning brew into a new echelon of relevance within the professional community. Seminal, 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 highly influential or important, often serving as a basis for future developments or innovations. His groundbreaking research was considered seminal in the field of neuroscience. Again, in the story, it was used in this sentence, transforming it from a mere coffee shop into a seminal hub for business collaboration. Collaboration. Co-lab-o-ration. Collaboration. 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 Working together with others towards a common goal or objective, often involving cooperation and sharing of resources or ideas. The successful project was the result of effective collaboration between different departments. In the story, it was part of this sentence, transforming it from a mere coffee shop into a seminal hub for business collaboration. Relentless, 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 relentless. It means persistent, determined, and unwilling to give up or stop. Despite facing many setbacks, she remained relentless in her pursuit of success. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Tom's relentless pursuit of excellence didn't wane. Wane. It's like way and then an N. Wane. Wane. To decrease gradually in, in intensity, vigor, or power. Interest in the product began to wane after the initial hype. In the story, again, it was part of this sentence. Tom's relentless pursuit of excellence didn't wane. Refined. Re-find. Refined. Improved or perfected by making small changes or adjustments. Polished. She refined her presentation based on feedback from her colleagues. In the story, it was used like this. He continually refined his offerings based on customer feedback. Integrating technological amenities. There's a mouthful for you. Integrating technological amenities. Integrating. Tech, no, lodge, a, cull. Ah, men, it, tease. Integrating technological amenities. Integrating technological amenities. Integrating technological amenities. Incorporating modern technological features or conveniences. 
the hotel upgraded its rooms by integrating technological amenities, such as smart lighting and automated temperature control. In the story, it was referred to in this sentence, integrating technological amenities, like Wi-Fi. Augmenting accessibility. Aug men teen augmenting accessibility ac ses ability accessibility augmenting accessibility augmenting accessibility increasing the ease or ability to access something often by adding or improving features or resources the company focused on augmenting accessibility by adding ramps and elevators for people with disabilities. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence, augmenting accessibility with additional power outlets. Scheme, scheme, scheme. A systematic plan or arrangement, a strategy or program designed to achieve a particular objective. The marketing team, devised a new advertising scheme to promote the product. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence and introducing a loyalty scheme to reward patronage. Reward patronage. Reward patronage. Reward patronage. Reward patronage. I like to reward patronage. Offering incentives or benefits to loyal customers or clients as a token of appreciation for their continued support. The airline rewards patronage with frequent flyer miles and exclusive perks for loyal travelers. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence and introducing a loyalty scheme to reward patronage. Flourished. <laughs> Difficult word for many to pronounce, but let's break it down into my crazy method. Flourished. 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 To grow or develop rapidly and successfully, to thrive or prosper. The business flourished after expanding into international markets. In the story, it was used in this sentence. As the morning brew flourished, it became emblematic of the symbiotic relationship between customer-centric innovation and business success. A great sentence that you hear many times. Symbiotic. Sim-bi-a-tic. Symbiotic. Symbiotic. Involving a mutually beneficial relationship or interaction between two or more entities. Example could be the partnership between the two companies was symbiotic, with each side gaining advantages from the collaboration. In the story, it was used in this sentence. As the morning brew flourished, it became emblematic of the symbiotic relationship between customer-centric innovation and business success. Humility. Humility. Humility, humility, a modest or humble attitude characterized by a lack of arrogance or pride. Despite his success, he always maintained an attitude of humility, recognizing that he had much to learn. In the story, it was used in this sentence, Tom's humility in acknowledging his clientele as the linchpin of his success story, resonated deeply within the business community. Lynchpin. 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 A person or thing that is vital or essential to the success or stability of something. Effective communication was the linchpin of their teamwork. In the story, it was used in this sense. Tom's humility in acknowledging his clientele as the linchpin of his success story resonated deeply within the business community. Culminated. 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 
culminated, to reach the highest point or climax, to conclude or end, typically with a significant event or achievement. Years of hard work culminated in her graduation from medical school. In the story, it was used in this sentence. This narrative of transformation and success culminated in an invitation for Tom to share his insights at a prestigious gathering of entrepreneurs. Prestigious. Press T just. Prestigious. Prestigious. Having high status or reputation, esteemed or honored. She was offered a prestigious scholarship to study at the renowned university. In the story, it was used in this sentence. This narrative of transformation and success culminated in an invitation for Tom to share his insights at a prestigious gathering of entrepreneurs. Articulated. 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 Expressing ideas or information clearly and effectively, often in speech or writing. As an example, she articulated her thoughts on the matter with precision and eloquence. In the story, it was used, addressing his peers, Tom articulated, esteemed colleagues tonight, I share with you a narrative, not just of personal triumph, but of the transformative power of listening and adapting to our clientele. Triumph. 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 A great victory or success. The feeling of happiness or satisfaction that comes from achieving a victory or success. Winning the championship was a triumph for the team after years of hard work. The story was used in this big sentence. Addressing his peers, Tom articulated. Esteemed colleagues, tonight I share with you a narrative, not just of personal triumph, but of the transformative power of listening and adapting to our clientele. Bedrock. Just like it sounds, bed, rock, bedrock. The fundamental basis or foundation of something, the most basic or essential part. Trust is the bedrock of any strong relationship. In the story, it was used like this. The Morning Brew stands as a testament to the ethos that our businesses thrive on the bedrock of understanding and meeting the needs of those we serve. Advocating. Ad, vo, ke, teen. Advocating. Advocating. Publicly supporting or recommending a particular cause, policy, or idea. She spent her time advocating for environmental protection measures. In the story, it was used in this sentence. He continued. Advocating for a paradigm where engagement and responsiveness to customer feedback are integral to business strategy. Paradigm. Yes, paradigm. 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 A typical example or pattern of something, a model or framework, used to understand and explain complex ideas. The shift to remote work during the pandemic led to a new paradigm in how businesses operate. In the story, it was used this way. He continued, advocating for a paradigm where engagement and responsiveness to customer feedback are integral to business strategy. Integral. Integral. Integral, 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 necessary or essential for completeness or functionality, forming a necessary part of a whole. 
An example sentence could be, communication is integral to a successful team. In the story, it was used in this sentence. He continued advocating for a paradigm where engagement and responsiveness to customer feedback are integral to business strategy. Ever evolving. Ever evolving. Ever evolving. Ever evolving. Constantly changing or developing over time. Continuously evolving. In today's ever evolving te technology landscape, companies must adapt quickly to stay competitive. In the story, it was used this way. In this ever evolving business landscape, let us anchor ourselves in the philosophy that our primary objective is to add tangible value to our customers' lives. Anchor. 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 To secure or establish something firmly in place to provide stability or support. A company's strong values anchor its employees during challenging times. In the story, it was used like this. In this ever-evolving business landscape, let us anchor ourselves in the philosophy that our primary objective is to add tangible value to our customers' lives. Primary. Pri Mary. Primary. First or highest in rank, importance or order, main or principal. Customer satisfaction is our primary concern. In the story, it was used like this. In this ever-evolving business landscape, let us anchor ourselves in the philosophy that our primary objective is to add tangible value to our customers' lives. Tangible. I really like this word. It just means real. You can really touch it, feel it, see it. Tangible. tan ja -bull. Tangible. Tangible. Perceptible by touch. Capable of being touched or felt. Real and concrete rather than abstract. The company saw tangible results from its marketing efforts and increased sales. In the story, it was used here. In this ever-evolving business landscape, let us anchor ourselves in the philosophy that our primary objective is to add tangible value to our customers' lives. Compelling. There's another really good word. Very compelling word. It's a great word for your business. Compelling. Compelling. Evoking interest, attention, or admiration in a powerfully irresistible way. Convincing or persuasive. The speaker delivered a compelling argument that persuaded many to change their minds. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. The journey of the morning brew is a compelling illustration of how customer-centric... Illustration. il us tre shun Illustration, 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 a visual aid or example that helps clarify a concept or idea. The graph provided a helpful illustration of the data trends. In the story, it was used in the sentence, the journey of the morning brew is a compelling illustration of how customer-centric approaches can forge unparalleled avenues for growth and innovation. Forge. <laughs> this was hard for me to write it out. So I wrote the number four, the word for the number four, and then a J. J. Forge. Forge. <laughs> I don't think it's my greatest effort for you, but <laughs> that's my crazy system. Forge. To create or develop something new, typically through effort or skill. To build or establish. The two companies forged a partnership to explore new markets together. In the story, it was used in this great sentence. The journey of the morning brew is a compelling illustration of how customer-centric approaches can forge unparalleled avenues for growth and innovation. Unparalleled. Un 
unparalleled, 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 without equal, unmatched, or unrivaled. Their customer service is unparalleled in the industry. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. Customer-centric approaches can forge unparalleled avenues for growth and innovation. Avenues. 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 It's also another name for a road, street, an avenue. Possible courses of action or opportunities for achieving a particular goal. Exploring new marketing avenues help the company reach a wider audience. In the story, it was used here. Customer-centric approaches can forge unparalleled avenues for growth and innovation. Teeming with sincerity. Teeming with sincerity. 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 Teeming with sincerity. Teeming with sincerity. Abundantly filled or overflowing with genuineness and honesty. Wow. <laughs> Just to be filled with truth and honesty. Her apology was teeming with sincerity, showing how truly remorseful she was. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. Tom's discourse, teeming with sincerity and insight, galvanized the audience. Galvanized. Gal -va -nized. Galvanized. Galvanized. To stimulate or excite someone to action. To inspire or motivate strongly. The leader's passionate speech galvanized the team to work harder towards their goals. In the story, it was used this way. Tom's discourse, teeming with sincerity and insight, galvanized the audience to do something. Poignant. Poi, and then the sound of the letter N, and then yent. Poignant. Poignant. Very poignant. This word is always so formal to me. Evoking a keen sense of sadness or regret, deeply moving or touching. The film's poignant ending left the audience in tears. Oh, so sad. In the story, it was used in this sentence. <laughs> Tom's discourse, teeming with sincerity and insight, galvanized the audience, serving as a poignant reminder of the gravity of fostering deep connections and understanding with our clientele. Gravity. 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 Seriousness or importance, like quality of being significant or having a strong impact. The gravity of the situation became apparent as the consequences unfolded. Ooh. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Tom's discourse, teeming with sincerity and insight, galvanized the audience, serving as a poignant reminder of the gravity of fostering deep connections and understanding with our clientele. Fostering. 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 Promoting the development of growth of something, nurturing or encouraging. The organization is committed to fostering a positive work environment for its employees. In the story, it was used like this. Tom's discourse, teeming with sincerity and insight, galvanized the audience, serving as a poignant reminder of the gravity of fostering deep connections and understanding with our clientele. Universal truth. Universal truth. Universal truth. Universal truth. Universal truth. A principle or concept that is believed to apply universally, regardless of individual circumstances or cultural differences. Honesty is often considered a universal truth across different cultures. In the story, it was used like this. Tom's journey underscores a universal truth. Success is linked 
to understanding and meeting customers' needs. Realm. Pronunciation is a little strange with this word. You might hear it pronounced different ways, but in the U.S., pretty common. Rel with a mmm on the end. Realm. Realm. A field or domain in which something operates or has influence, a sphere of activity or interest. The realm of technology was constantly evolving. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Success in the realm of business often hinges on adapting to changing customer needs. Inextricably. In ex trick -ably. Inextricably. 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 In a way that's impossible to separate or disentangle from something else. Their lives were inextricably linked by their shared experiences. In the story, it was used within this sentence. Success is inextricably linked to our capacity to listen, adapt, and so much more. Capacity. Ca Pass it capacity, capacity, the ability or power to do, experience, or understand something. The human brain has an incredible capacity for learning and memory. In the story, it was used this way. Success is inextricably linked to our capacity to listen, adapt, and exceed customer expectations. Strive. Such a great word. I don't know how else to spell it. So just strive to make great efforts or struggle in order to achieve or attain something. They strive for excellence in everything they do. In the story, it was used like this. At the heart of every successful venture lies a profound commitment to customer satisfaction and engagement. For which entrepreneurs must continually strive <laughs> to exceed, 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 to exceed, to go beyond what is expected, required, or usual, to surpass or outperform. The company aims to exceed customer expectations with every product launch. In the story, it was used like this. Success is inextricably linked to our capacity to listen, adapt, and exceed customer expectations. 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 The anticipated or desired outcome or standard that someone or something is expected to achieve or fulfill. The team worked hard to meet the client's expectations for the project. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence, our capacity to listen, adapt, and exceed customer expectations. Showcasing. 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 Displaying or presenting something in an impressive or attractive way. Highlighting or featuring something. The event is showcasing the latest advancements in technology. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Tom's journey illustrates the importance of showcasing customer satisfaction and engagement. Now, now that you've seen all of these different definitions from the eloquent level, you can go back and go through the story again in the eloquent story because a big part of this is really understanding the pronunciation the use of the words what they mean how to use them and when you combine that with all this deep learning you're able to gain confidence even though this level is very very hard for most everyone going through this you'll see that you can do it. So if you're still here watching this extremely long video, I challenge you, 
Go through these words, go through them slowly, go through them with me, say them with me, feel them, really understand them, feel that deep learning process. Then go through the story. You can go through sentence by sentence, paragraph by paragraph, or the whole story. And you'll see, you can do this, but it's hard. You have to put the work in. There's no shortcut, there's no magic formula. You have to put the work in. I really hope you enjoy this. <laughs> I would love to hear your comments below of what you thought of these three stories and the challenge of trying to go through these three stories. So please share your experience. Everybody would love to hear what you have to say about these. Thank you again for going through this long video. And I hope you find this really interesting. I plan to make many more of these in the future. Enjoy. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, share your comments. And I also invite you to learn your business English confidence score. You'll find the link in the description below this video.